Welcome to Briançon in France, the second French town in a row to host the IFSC, and this is the final IFSC World Cup before the World Championships at the beginning of August. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Campbell Harrison in the commentary box. How are you? It's been a very long time since I've seen you. Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. I'm super excited to be here in Briançon, especially with the with the new wall and everything. It's a uh, Really, really exciting, and yeah, I've had a great time, and I'm really looking forward to the final. Awesome. Well, we watched you climb in the semi-final yesterday. We're going to have a look now at some of the highlights from that to see where our finalists came from. And Campbell, you can tell us especially about that men's route. So let's check out that video. Oh, wait. There we go. So we're looking now at some of the women's highlights. That was Alexandra Totskova coming down, not making it. A tricky women's route resistance throughout, and that move around 34 plus in to Zhang Kim. She came down, as did Shen So in the same place. A bit of a surprise for both of them. They won't climb again this evening. And Campbell, that was a shocker when they went. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was sitting uh, quite close to Martina Demo when she uh, saw Chan So take that fall, and it just it was um, this like crazy moment that she never expected. It was really exciting to see it. Like, super disappointing for the two Korean climbers. It was really sad that they didn't really get to show their best, but also very cool that we get like some new faces in the final. Also very cool that we get like some new faces in the final as well. And yeah, really excited for those athletes who managed to make it through. Absolutely. Well, we saw Martina Demo, we saw Camilla Puget, Vita Lucan here taking the swing, and Molly Thompson-Smith back from injury, back into her finals. She qualified high up in fourth position. Natsuki Tani, young climber, took that fall but qualified in third. And then Nanoha Kume, one of two Japanese women in the finals. And finally, you're about to see her, Eliska Adamovska. She's won here in 2021, Campbell, and can she repeat it? Yeah, something about this venue for her really makes her shine. I think she's had a bit of a, a bummer of a season so far, but yeah, she just looked on fire yesterday, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see like an equal performance again this afternoon. Well, we'll have to hold our breath and see. She's out last for the women, and there you are, Campbell. Oh, it's me, there we go. <laughs> Looking very chill there. Oh, not so chill there. No, <laughs> took a bit of a fall before the head wall, but it was a, a route that most of the athletes, well, everyone got into the head wall, and this move proved problematic for a few. A slippy left hand, slippy right hand, sent people back down to the ground. Yeah, it was an unusually comfortable route uh, for the beginning. I think all the way up into the head wall, lots of really nice holds, like really flowy moves, good footholds. Um, and so then it just kind of like, kicked you as soon as you made it over that lip so uh, definitely a unique semi-final I think for the men and interesting to see who was able to kind of perform under that pressure usually if you get super high like that in a semi you think you maybe you're going to make the final so it was yeah really unique well this man is the only non-Japanese men male in the final Hannes Pullman what an effort from him yeah that was exceptional I think uh, so far this season also maybe an athlete who hasn't really been having the best climbing uh, but yeah, watching him in the semi-final, like that was all gone, and yeah, he uh, had a really good day yesterday. He did, and he's had today to recover. We're watching now the last couple of men who made it through, and Serato and Raku, the last one qualifying in first position. Can he win a lead World Cup to add a gold to his boulder collection? We will find out in the next couple of hours. And right now. That is our stadium. Campbell, a new wall, and you were saying to me how much you like that wall. I am a huge fan of this wall. I think it's it's quite unique in a lot of ways compared to the other walls. It's it's not super steep compared to a lot of them, um, but it's, it's really long. You get this really long head wall, and so it's a lot of like really classic, pumpy endurance style climbing. And I think in recent years, we've sort of seen a turn away from that style. So it's nice to have this event which really like showcases the roots of lead climbing. It's been really nice. Absolutely. And the athletes now coming out onto the catwalk style feature has been built at the front of the stage. Quite unique, this one. You can see uh, uh, nowhere to stand in front of the wall. <laughs> soldiers they've reached their mark and looking at these men here Campbell I mean we're missing some big names from this final for men and women a lot of people concentrating on the world champs in a couple of weeks but still I mean just in terms of the Japanese on the stage right now it's incredible the depth oh yeah the final is absolutely still stacked I think I think the combined plays a lot into which athletes are able to attend which events and so a lot of positions that would otherwise be 
uh, for specialists uh, relegated to the combined athletes. So I think particularly in an event like Clemson, we tend to see the lead specialists themselves. And so while the names might be different to what we're used to, it's no less uh, of an elite echelon, like especially from the from a team like the Japanese team. Oh, absolutely. And Yoshiki Ogata there down at the end, Shion Omata, Satoni Yoshida. I mean, the list goes on and on. And a couple of names we haven't seen too much of, so it'll be interesting to watch them climb here tonight. Shion Omata is introduced to our crowd. He's 17. So super young, ninth in Chamonix, so just outside of the finals and now makes it into a final. And the crowd, I mean, Campbell, I was here pretty early this afternoon and they've been filtering in and now they're filling the field. It's Yeah, it's huge. And I think we saw the same thing in Chamonix as well. The crowd is usually big in Chamonix, but there were just so many people. It's just this like inconceivable number of, of climbing fans. Um, especially, you know, coming out to a place like pré which otherwise is quite a, a quiet little town. Um, yeah, it, it's it's so cool to see, and I think it's going to be such like an electrifying show, especially once the sun goes down and the spotlights come up. It's it's just like so immense. It really is. When that darkness falls, as you say, it becomes pretty special with the lights. It does get a bit colder in the evening. It's been hot all day. It's cooler now. The sun has gone. A bit of a breeze in the stadium. Yeah, I made the big mistake of uh, not bringing a jacket to semi-finals yesterday. Finished my climb. It's still pretty warm, and then. Um, just like started to freeze as the night went by so I came a little bit more prepared tonight. I'm glad you said that I'm not, I'm not the only one I was in a t-shirt shivering by the end oh, of that. Oh yeah service. because it's so hot during the day it's so easy to make the mistake that it's 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 going to stay warm throughout but no it definitely starts to cool down in the evening. Yeah and you can see the golden light on the mountains behind and Hannes Pullman was just announced to the crowd from Sweden last made a final in 2019 in Hachioji so it's been a while for him. Not so for this man, Masihiro Guguchi, regular in the finals. Yeah, one silver, one gold, one bronze. So yeah, probably looking to add another another medal to the tally and, and definitely very capable. He looked uh, really strong and really in control through the semi-final. Like, never really in doubt no. as he made his way to the top. So yeah, cool to see him. Well, he is another one who was never really in doubt. He looks so casual during the semi-finals, just cruised through the route. Yeah, he's really just like, He's come of age to be in the IPC World Cups and really just popped up out of nowhere and is just consistently performing. <laughs> yeah, he won the 23 Boulder season. And not his specialism as well. The Japanese selector sort of threw him into that situation. He obviously dealt with it fairly well. And now he's back on a lead rope. Right, the athletes observed the route earlier on, and I think we're going to get a chance to look at that in a minute. But right now, in real time, they're leaving the stage through the crack in the wall to the back area so let's have a look at the observation that took place earlier on and Campbell I always just like looking at who's reading the route with which person because mm -hmm. I find it fascinating and also when mistakes happen because often when a team reads it they may read, read the mistakes yeah as well. who's shared beta with each other you often you'll you'll see people have like maybe really unique interpretations I think it's really easy to forget watching from home as you get more and more information of, on the route as every climber climbs we still we haven't seen anything other than that like short little six minute period where we get to look at the roots and maybe you haven't spotted every hold maybe you haven't interpreted every sequence and so yeah it's really really interesting to see how people are uh, sort of interpret the route individually and and yeah share their sort of right and wrong <laughs> interpretations <laughs> of that of the of the final well Talking about right and wrong, Hans Pullman, he would have read this fairly isolated because there is a bit of a language barrier between some of the Japanese athletes uh, and him. Yeah. Obviously, English is, is okay for some of them. It just depends. But they're reading it as a group there, and Hannes was a bit by himself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, six minutes is a very short period of time when it comes down to it. And I know yesterday viewing semifinals, it was like, okay, like, who can I jump in with to view this route like you just get in as quickly as possible and so the Japanese guys are obviously going to view the route with their mates they know how they climb they know how they think they probably don't know Hannes quite as well um, and also you know it's a long time to potentially navigate a language barrier so it could be a little bit easier for him to get stuck in there on his own but we did just see some footage of him sharing some uh, beta with uh, Taisei Homa there as well. Yeah, certainly he would have talked to them if at all possible. Well, that is our top eight. As you can see, seven Japanese athletes, one Swedish athlete, and a couple of big names missing. Adam Ondra, for example, Alex Magos, and a few others are away for the world champs. And for the women as well, 
And the likes of Natalia Grossman, Hannah Moyle, Brooke Rabatou, Ariane Berton, I could go on. There's a lot of people not here this weekend. But for me, that makes it even more exciting. Oh, we, yeah. We don't know who's going to win. And it, and it still was like, I was quite surprised to see a lot of people kind of performing like getting the same positions that they have in the previous comps as well as like while these big names are gone the fields are still completely stacked like you still have to perform to that same standard um you know with the athletes that do come in to take those spaces some of the teams like the french team the japanese team they have this huge depth of talent to work through uh, absolutely well here we go we're almost underway first climber yoshiki ogata on the wall So if you're just joining us, welcome to Briançon. We're here for the IFSC Elite World Cup. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Campbell Harrison, and we're about to watch Yoshiyuki Ogata climb on this men's route. And Campbell, fairly straightforward start through the first section. Yeah, definitely. I thought both of these routes look more or less kind of uh, classic lead style. They're a, a fitness test. Um, maybe a little bit of a pounce toward the start of the men's route, and then some pretty pumpy, intense climbing. I didn't see too many rests, but that you never really know from the ground, um, but a lot of moves. Like both the routes are just super long by the looks of things. Yeah, it's going to be a grind for the athletes. I love pounce, by the way. I'm going to steal that as yeah. a great way to describe it. Well, yeah, this, this we, is the pounce. This is the pounce. All right, so this is a jump up, two hands. Oh, he goes left first, and pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty really. pretty big feet, big hand holds. Like I would be surprised if we see anyone lose it on that move but you know it's it definitely like kind of sets the tone for an athlete's climb whether or not they're able to commit to those sorts of moves straight off the bat yeah, well he's through that slightly scary start to the route into the orange pinches and the one on the far right is the best one yeah these are not quite as good as i expected i think that climbing on them in qualifications was the first time i really got to handle them um and yeah they're they have a good texture, but it's not like, you, you do still have to squeeze on them, so they can be quite taxing, even though they look up close, they look quite good. Yeah, and it's just gonna start burning out. You can see there, they're all sloping downhill. And these EP holds he's about to go onto, although they look good, the friction on them is not so good. Pretty no, good. and then, yeah, these big like hugging volumes that he's gonna have to approach, gonna take some, uh, take some real energy as well. There is a jib somewhere where his left hand is. The root set has put it on fairly last minute. Interesting. Ah, oh, here we go. I thought this uh, undercling he's in is one of the better holds in this section. So, yeah, I thought he would definitely have to clip from there. Um, and then, yeah, this is where the pump is really going to start kicking in. Yeah, he's got to get all up and involved in that volume. He's got to wrap himself around it. There's a vague rest coming up. If you can get that side pull, you can sort of squat on this next hole, but it's awkward. All right, so he changes it into a toe and now starts to look right. And this is really the first big crux for the men's route here. Yeah, yeah, I've heard there's like a little cross through coming up that's quite uh, potentially quite bouldery. We'll see. The foot's quite good, though. He didn't seem to have too much trouble with it just yet. Yeah, absolutely cruising. But he's about to enter the big 30 degree overhanging head wall which seems to go on for an eternity up there. Yeah, it's, it's really, really long. You, you cut, usually as you come into the lip of a lead World Cup wall, you're starting to approach the end, but there's quite a lot of climbing still to go. Um, and all these blue holes look really horrible from the ground. So hopefully we'll start to see uh, maybe a little fatigue coming through. Yeah, it's been cruisy so far for Yoshiki Ogata. He's known more for his bouldering than his lead, but he's just as good at lead. But endurance can sometimes get him. So it'll be interesting to see how he copes with his slopers at the top. Yeah, quite an accurate little move there, but he's still looking pretty good, honestly. There he is, into the Gaston. Looking at him now, barely breathing up there on the wall. Gets the low clip in by his hip. Chalking up, still looking... Kind of fresh, or oh, maybe starting to show a little bit of fatigue, but... Yeah, this is where the set has told me that we're expecting to see some separation. You can see Yoshiyuki not trying to clip that draw yet. And I'm not sure he can. Goes up with the left. He is ignoring that quick draw, slaps and goes. But a score of 48, first athlete out. What a benchmark set from him. Yeah, that was a, 
really, really high climb for the first athlete out. Um, yeah, we'll see, I guess. But I mean, same thing with yesterday in the semi-final. The first men, uh, the first men and women actually that came out for both routes climbed super high, and we were all quite nervous that maybe the route wasn't going to be hard enough. And then, you know, there were no tops in the women and only two tops for the men. So it still ended up being quite a good separation. I think the length of the wall causes people to fall at some point or another you know the pump definitely builds yeah it really does you can see exhausted athletes coming down yesterday and yoshiyuki i always thought he was yawning then but i think he was just sucking in air yeah this was the first jump a bit scary in terms of risk but not difficult for these guys you can see the wind blowing in the background there nice breeze coming and on the slope is by now he was just fighting the pump ignored that quick draw up at the left hand kept on bumping why not yeah, we had a few of those uh, big black and white dual tech slopers in the qualies as well, and they're like kind of just good enough that you can claw your way through, but it's super hard to, to stop and rest and clip on them as well. All right, well, next athlete, Shion Omata, is about to enter the stage. Yeah, just missed out on finals in Chamonix. Ninth has got to be the worst place to finish in. Yeah, yeah, I think it hurt. Anytime you finish ninth, 27th, just that one spot out of finals, it's always uh, always hurts and you're always wondering what you could have done better. But yeah, luckily he saw the next opportunity and he took it. Yeah, and he's improving every comp. So he was, well, not sorry, Vilas, he was eighth. So Shamini one step back for ninth. So he'll be looking to return to, uh, to a higher position here. So we know fairly straightforward down the bottom, but mistakes can still happen. Yeah, I think this route's going to be all about efficiency and precision. I think, you know, last week we saw uh, Sam Avizu and Chamonix um, come out with what was probably one of the most efficient finals climbs I've ever seen in my life. And I think that's going to be like the name of the game for this route as well, just with the sheer length. I think none of the individual moves are really the challenge. It's going to be about minimizing every sort of subsequent mistake and just maintaining efficiency as much as possible. Yeah, it's a bit like in a, a race, if you sort of, oh, hang on, we'll just watch this move. He made that look pretty hard, actually. Yeah, that was a slightly different beta than what we saw from Yoshiki. I, I didn't really uh, think too much of that move, that sequence, but... Yeah, he had to really press with that left hand. But he's in and he's safe. He's got another jump to come out towards the slope. As you can see, the hand prints of Yoshiki. Yeah, no real troubles with that jump. I think it's... Uh, as far as dinos in a World Cup go, pretty straightforward. Yeah, absolutely cruising here at the moment. Through the bottom, nice and simple. Socks in his climbing shoes as well, somewhat uh, unique. Yeah, it gets talked about a lot. I love talking about it on a stream because I think I'm, I'm too old school. I'm used to the bare feet. Yeah, sometimes when it's really cold, honestly, like a good thin pair of socks in the climbing shoes or just like... To when you're doing like a lot of really high volume sessions, it is quite nice actually. I've become a little bit impartial oh, to no, the sticky sock in the shoe. <laughs> All right, I won't judge. I won't judge. And we've just been told, by the way, that Ogata was not awarded the plus uh, for that last hold. So that's why he's got the score, which I think is 48. But yeah, wasn't awarded the plus. Being quite strict with pluses uh, at this comp, I found as well, uh, which is good, you know, especially when it's when it. Uh, leads to you know good separation between the athletes as well but yeah you have to be really convincing with your movement and you have to be in the right sequence as well yeah we should explain a plus so a plus is when you're you you fall going to the next hold but you're changing your center of mass and you're moving your hands towards the direction of the next hold yeah it is up to the judges it can be difficult to tell something that's often appealed after competitions or during competitions right Shion Omata is onto the black slopey volumes right now. Beautiful light on the mountains behind. Yeah, as the as the sun sort of starts to set behind the mountain, you get this really like cool cascading effect over the wall. It's it's a really beautiful place here in Prionson as well. It is indeed. And Shion has got the left hand jib, which you really can't see in the shot. I, I couldn't see it with the naked eye from the ground, but I was told it was there. High splits position with the right leg. It's quite tricky with our viewing in this venue as well. You can't get too far back from the wall. So um, 
it's quite hard to spot any of the little gyms that might be sitting above the volume. So for most of the athletes, if not all the athletes, it's going to be quite blind coming into these last sections as well. Yeah, we do see some climbers with binoculars and it's, it is difficult, as Harrison says. Yeah, I, this. that's okay. I think uh, <laughs> I think in the... Oh, uh, I called your second name. That was every, weird. Uh, I mean, I, uh, I kind of have two last names, so it, it's all good. It happens all the time. But yeah, in the women, I was hearing that during that sort of 34 plus crux, uh, it was really hard to know where the jibs are, where the blockers were. And so that really contributed to whether or not if, if athletes sort of took a look at the at the hold before they moved versus they just went for it confidently really had an effect on whether or not they were able to stick the moves. Oh, we're watching now. Xion really struggled with that cross through. Yeah, it looked really powerful. I mean, Yoshiyuki Ogata really is one of the physically the strongest people on the circuit, so it makes sense he would make that move look so easy. But he's looking cruisy again now. He's managed to sort of fight his way through and he's back in cruise control again. Yeah, so he's got lots of time. Minute 47 on the clock on the bottom right of your screen. And that's what he's got left. Three quick draws and then a jump to the top. Shared finish for both the men and women. And he's got the thumb in and some slippery holds up there with that no-tech surface. Yeah, yeah, these all look really shallow and really nasty. I think we got a... Um, maybe Yoshiki made them look a little bit better than what we're going to see. Yeah, we'll see. Shionomata is breathing heavy, but he looks like he's found something after that crux. And this is where we saw Yoshiyuki really start to fight on these slopers. So far, he's got the quick draw by his right. Look at that right elbow go up. Makes that clip. Super tentative position. And he's got to do a big move with the left hand. Creeps it up, snatches and falls. So 44, quite a long way behind the matters 48, if you think about the fact that I think it's fairly straightforward up to that head walk. Yeah, 100%. I think that was uh, showing yeah, there's some good separation so far between the two athletes. There's, and there was still a lot of climbing prior to that point where you could easily run out of juice um, or, or misinterpret a sequence as well. So um, looking good for the root setters so far, I think. Yeah, they'll be somewhere having a, uh, having a beer and enjoying the climbing. They work pretty hard. This was the move down low. Uh, this is the move on the pinches. Yeah, not as good as they look, and that line of dual text as well means the sort of middle of your hand doesn't quite get the grip you'd want. It's uh, quite exciting. We're seeing some um, Australian holds on the wall right now, actually. Yeah. The uh, Unleashed Climbing have, um, have uh, been approved as an IFSC hold supplier, and so it's been really, really cool to see a few holds from home that, that the Aussies have a bit more uh, knowledge of, and that's like, like something super unique for us. So, yeah, really cool to see some homegrown holds. Well, that is our double wall there. You can see the speed wall on the left of that shot. So Tony Yoshida comes out. Do you have any idea why he double straps his wrists? I would... Because I, I thought it was injury, but he seems to be doing it almost every comp. I don't know if it's almost like a ritual with him. Yeah, it could be some kind of wrist instability, or maybe it's some kind of taping to like open up blood flow. Uh, I think there's lots of, I mean, it's like the little pads as well that they wear on their body also. It, there's all these little things. It's like whether or not it actually has a physiological effect, I'm not sure. But, you know, if, if in your mind it helps you, then it, that's just as important. Absolutely. And he, he's one of the few who's continuing to wear those patches. You can see them there. There's a little bit of metal inside them. And it's, as you said, sort of meant to help. I think it's something to do with muscle blood flow or something like that. I wasn't mm. explained it. But it's not 100% science. But as you said, if it makes you feel in the right frame of mind, it's good. I mean, and it's all about those like small little gains, really. Every athlete who comes to these events is, is in peak form or as close to it as they can get. And so whatever kind of small advantage you can give yourself on the wall is what could make the difference. Absolutely, yeah. Well, Satani Yoshida cuts loose, flies above the crowd there. It's cool to see. Yeah, picked out by the spotlight. By the time we finish tonight, it will be in darkness. Quite a late final starting time here. We began at 8.25, now coming up to 10 to 9. And a big jump. Floated over to the left, but popped a foot there when he did the swap. Didn't stop for the rest like the other athletes have, but maybe because he's not quite tall enough to stand on that volume in the same way that they were. Yeah, it's a good point. He is 168 centimetres. We've got Shio Nomata, 162. So, no, maybe he had the height. Maybe just simply a case of not being pumped and just thinking, well, you know, I'm not going to stop down low. Yeah, for sure. 
definitely uh, not wanting to like use up too much unnecessary time. But it's so hard. I, I don't think I could ever judge that moment where you rest, especially when you get a good hold down low. Yeah, it's, it's quite easy to rest too much. It's also quite easy to just simply not see a rest or not quite feel it. You maybe don't get the exact body position, so you decide to keep moving. Sometimes it's also really easy to just keep moving before you kind of realize that you have and, and you're just like, okay, well, I'm flowing now. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, that was the rest disappearing yeah. behind me. Well, he is climbing pretty quick here up to the head wall, almost on the head wall. That's the waiting area for the athletes. That's the bottom left of the stage underneath the speed wall. And he's got toes and heels engaged and then brings the left foot up to the slope, but makes the clip and now he faces this cruxy sequence. Trying to score a little rest here, maybe to make up for the one that he didn't see earlier. Usually yeah. the head wall is pretty relentless, so this might be his last opportunity to get something back. Yeah, I think it is really. And you can see him shaking out. Yeah, this is where the set has said there was a rest, but we saw Yoshiyuki rest kind of one volume down from that. It's not the best rest, a bit awkward. You still have to keep some body tension. Yeah, nice big feet though, so you can, if you find the right position, you can put quite a lot of weight through the lower body. Goes through this section really fast, makes it look super smooth. Yeah, Ninja kicked his way over to the right. Very cool, and then popping out to these volumes. And now, as we know, this is the business end of the route now. Slopers all the way up until, well, the very last move, which is a dyno. Looking strong and precise so far, starting to fight a little bit. Yeah, it seems when they do that move out to the crimp, everything starts to unwind for the athletes here. He's got the low clip in, though, one above his head to come. Looks out left to where there's a foot, gets it, and yeah, now starting to snatch at the holes a little more. Looks, matches, gets the left sloper in. Good in control. Can he make this clip, though? He's got the big here. He looked at the draw then, thought about it. Yeah, yeah, I think he's picked a good spot for it. Oh, here we go. It's looking suddenly. super fresh. Yeah, yeah, out of nowhere. Some seems... of these athletes are just able to look, look pumped and then absolutely get it back in no time at all. Well, if he manages to find something here, it'll be pretty special. Oh, oh but he slides off. off. Fingers just slipping down that hold. And at the moment, Satoni Yoshida jumps up into the top spot, 49 plus. He gets that plus, which was all important. Yoshiki yeah. not being awarded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus can make all the difference, especially in those like uh, tight little bottlenecks toward the top of the wall. Ah, well, things are close at the moment. We've had three athletes, eight in a final. And then the women's final will take place after this. We'll roll straight into that. Let's see a replay of down low. That was the move he made. Look. In, in that replay, it was easier than it looked on TV, I think. Crosses through into the orange pinches. Yeah, he made, he made really good time. I think he didn't waste too much energy. Uh, perhaps, you know, sometimes you can, like, claw a little hard for a rest that isn't there, so maybe skipping that rest wasn't such a bad decision. Um, yeah, he certainly didn't seem phased by it. Found something at the top, but eventually it wasn't enough to save him, and down he came. Right, Haruki Amuru is out onto the stage. 44th in Chamonix, not the best cup for him, but he's barely into the senior side of things. He's just 19. Fourth in Dallas during the Youth Championship, and before that he was in Voronezh. But apart from that, we really haven't seen him that much on the circuit in recent years. Yeah, two participations, there you go. 0% progression to finals, so first time in the finals. And it's mad, isn't it? And we said at the beginning, this Japanese team, the depth in it. But, you know, he's turned up. He's done two World Cups. He's in a final. And it's not that unexpected for that Japanese team. No, absolutely not. The, the standard of climbing there is just so high. And I think the number of places they can take in finals and semifinals is more limited by the number of people they can have in the competition rather than the depth of the field of that country. It's like really, really next level what some of their athletes can do, I think. It absolutely is. And we've got, well, seven of them in this final, so that's quite clear. All right, Taruki is climbing through the bottom section, nice and cruisy at the moment. 
And you can hear, if you're listening carefully, we've got microphones on the wall, behind the wall, I think, and you can hear every clip and a kick on the wall. There, you can hear it. Such a cool little addition that I've really enjoyed being able to hear the athletes breathing and like really putting in the effort. Hearing that like really satisfying slap that you yes. get when you're live in the venue like really brings you into the space. Yeah, I completely agree with you. It's a, a good addition, so enjoy that if you're listening at home. And this is the last World Cup for a while. We've got a two-week break before the next one. Big jump over to the left, but makes it look easy as he swings the feet back in. Yeah, two-week break and then World Champs beginning of August. That's to come. Big, big, big event for a lot of people. You know, a lot of competitors, very few Olympic spots up for grabs. Um, World Championships is always like a, a high priority for a lot of nations. Holds a lot of, of weight yeah, within the climbing world. Yeah, I cannot wait for that. Haruki there got the uh, sort of intermediate sloper on the volume before bumping into the jib. Again, not resting, opting for just that sort of uh, continuous flow method. We definitely some athletes are a bit more stop-start with their climbing and then others just like that, almost like that sort of Kim Jae-in style of just move, chalk, move, chalk, intermittently resting throughout the route but never really stopping. Yes, lots of micro shakes on the way. Yeah, for sure. This is a record, by the way, for the most men of a single nation in the final. The Japanese have previously held it in Vilar in 2022 with four, so seven going way past that. And uh, guaranteed two places on the podium. Yeah. Like guaranteed medals. That is is really unbelievable. I know, I you run out of words when you're talking about yeah. them sometimes. It's just amazing, <laughs> incredible. Like, yeah, <laughs> you just start to like, you're like, I don't have the vocabulary exactly. for this anymore. I'm just going to go there. Very just, good. Yeah, very, very good at climbing. <laughs> Hold on well. <laughs> that's why they pass <laughs> the big bucks, you they see. Let, they don't let go, and <laughs> that's how they get so high. Well, he's trying hard not to let go now, but having to fight on that underclink. It looks big on TV, but it's an awkward angle. Uh, different uh, different beta there. Yeah, the set has told me that you could use both of them theoretically. It doesn't really matter too much in terms of the the, uh, the route. Yeah, he's almost got he's got like a little uh, heel toe cam against the bolt blocker as well, which is allowed. Um, the blockers are like super slippery, but I think you can get like a nice little bit of friction in there, and that that takes a lot of weight uh, off of your arms as well. Yeah, smart climbing from him, and he's onto the head wall now. So here we go, resting on the crux. This is a shouldery unwind. Very different from Satoni's skip across that. Ricky, look, he's like he's enjoying himself out there. Yeah, looking pretty fresh, but we've seen so far like this is where the route really starts to kick in. Uh, the fatigue's going to build. Yeah, this next quick draw, then that crimp to the left of it seems to be the stopping point for a lot of athletes in terms of burnout. Let's find out what happens here. Ruki has the match. He's almost jamming one of those fingers yeah, underneath. Yeah, I, I think he's. Uh, I think he's trying to get a little back here and maybe clawing for a rest that isn't there, which can use a lot of energy, and he's off. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, I think he was trying to get a, a lock in or a jam, just anything to be able to shake. Yeah, honestly, nothing takes more energy, I think, than it's like either a foot slip or looking for a rest that isn't there. Um, you really, it's like doing, you're just adding extra moves at that yeah. point. Um, sometimes you've just got to keep moving, and that's what makes the difference. Yeah, and you can see it, can't you? I, I tend to get tense in the commentary box when I'm watching that, because we know what they should be doing or could be doing. For sure. Yeah, yeah, we have so much information on the route already that these athletes just don't have. Um, you know, and they would have an idea now that people are climbing quite high on the route, that it's a high scoring round. Um, but, you know, that could mean anything. It could mean people have stopped for a really long time low down. We, we don't really know. And, and, and they especially have, have no idea what's, what's been going on in the front of the stage. Yeah, and this Briançon wall, well, this one's new this year, but generally Briançon setting is famous for not being particularly tricky. It's just endurance. A bit yeah. old school in the terms of the roots, and these athletes are so strong that they will hang on long into the head wall for most of them. But good separation at the moment. Four athletes done. And we will take a brief pause in proceedings here while we get set up for the next ones and take a chance to look at our leaderboard. So it's Satoni Yoshida leading the way, 49 plus. 
because Yuki Ugata after that 49, not given the plus. Shionomata, Haruki Amuru after that with 37 plus. So yeah, good separation, almost 10 points of difference between fourth and first. Taisa Helmer, Hannes Puman, Mashihiro Higuchi, and Serato and Raku to come. So, four to go, Harris. What do we think of this? Harris, why do I keep doing that? Campbell, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I keep saying Harrison. You and everybody else. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Absolutely fine. So, tell me what you guys have been up So, obviously, Oceana McKenzie has been talked about a lot this season. Yeah, and with, uh, I think, with good reason. The form that we've seen out of her, I'm really good friends with Osh. We trained together in Melbourne, known each other since we were really young. Um, and oh my gosh, she's made a next level jump. It is very special to watch her and yourself climb. Well, let's see some highlights of this top four. Shuki Yagata bolded his way through that sequence as the wind was blowing. Ignored a quick drop, fought through the slopers at the top. And likely why he didn't get scored for the plus. It would be that maybe the it was not deemed possible to clip from that point, and so that's why he wouldn't get uh, scored for his progress. Okay, there we go. Yeah, brought that foot up. This was the pinches. I can't see the jib on that volume at all. I don't think there is a jib on the top one. I think there's there's definitely a jib on the bottom one on the right hand side. Yeah. Maybe there was like a last minute decision to take it off. Yeah, as possibly. Well. Yeah. So yeah, ignore me saying that, that's what I was told, but a bit different. Satoni Yoshida swinging out with that jump. Again, matching on the pinches on the way through into the sloper system. High up the wall again on those slopers, and they look like those awful kind of holes where your hands just open up off them. Oh, absolutely. There's like, they're kind of flat, but there's not really like a bitey lip that you can get into. And the fact that the rest of the hold is dual text as well means that like, You've got like a, this little bit of texture and the rest of your hand is very easily slipping off as well. So it makes for like a really unique squeeze. Yeah, tough at the top of the route when you're pumped. So, missed the slap up and that is the story so far. And that is our audience who enjoy the climbing. So we're about to enter the second half of the men's final. Women's final taking place after this. Campbell Harrison would be in the commentary box. And it is Taise Homer out and on the stage. And Campbell, I say this every year, I don't care. I love watching this man climb. He, he's such a cool climber to watch. He has such a crazy style. I think I was sitting with some other climbers and they say even when the way he shakes out, they said it was like mesmerizing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like so focused, so strong. Yeah, really cool climber to watch. All right, let's see what he can do with this route. He's certainly one who battles through tricky sequences. He's going to need all of that high, high points so far. Yeah, he has a, a very pure sort of lead climbing style, and I think that should likely suit this route. He's coming out of injury, so hopefully that's not uh, playing on his mind too much. Yeah, that left ankle heavily taped. That was the injury he received just made it back in time for the beginning of the lead season. Yeah, I think he was quite pleasantly surprised as well with his performance straight off the bat. I think he thought it might take some, some more time to get into the flow, but yeah, straight back into it. No problems with the jump, super cruisy, um, getting a little back before he moves into the steeper section of the wall. Yeah, and he often puts in, oh, like this, a heel hook, and I always look at the ankle. I haven't seen any pain from him anyway. He's definitely got some, uh, some strapping on it. I know from my own experience, like ankles really can, they're the kinds of injuries that just stick around for way too long um, and they'll flare up one day and be fine the next. So hopefully it's not giving him too much trouble, but yeah, there's definitely a little bit of bandaging going on in that one. Yeah, he'll try to put it out of his mind because he's got to be using it, as you can see, lots of tension through that foot as he gets a toe in and a bit of a unique method, this. And lost the toe for a sec. I thought he might come down then, but he made the move to slide the toe out and cause a bit of a swing. Yeah, looking not quite so secure um, compared to what we've seen so far. But, you know, we had a really big day of climbing yesterday. So depending on, you know, how the qualies went, moving into the semis, sort of the, maybe the gap you had between rounds, um, it can be a really brutal schedule to then back up the next day as well. It's also Tyson Homer, and he always looks like he's about to fall off. Very so it's true. hard to tell. Very true. 
Yeah, he's got this really interesting style, as you can see, different ways through moves. Really like mincing each hold, like making sure everything is just right before he moves on. I think there is a jib, you know, I can just see it there. Ah, uh, the yeah. Left. There okay. we go. So <laughs> it's got enough chalk on so it's visible. <laughs> there you go. And there you can see he's putting his heel yeah, on Yeah, so two jibs on the bottom one, but then nothing on the, on the top hold. Coming in with that left hand to the lower crimp as well on this one, so maybe they viewed the route together. Yeah, it could be. It's very similar, isn't it? All right, side pull to come. He gets a knee scrub in there. Just enough for a shake out on the left. And another possible rest here, if he can see it, off that shallow right hand. Tight little toe hook. It's quite... There, it's comfortable on those toe hooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's, he's pretty comfy on his feet, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, looking quite comfortable considering that for his height, this is quite like a tight little box to fit into. Um, but he's making it work for sure. All right, here we go. He's looking focused as he crosses the hands through, unwinds to the next jib. And a little pop over to the right. And right, this is it. So I feel like this is where the route starts on that line there. Yeah, really starting to kick in, and it's going to be a matter of yeah how efficiently he's able to make it through, how well he's able to read these unique little Dultex holds. But so far, few issues. Not using that blue hold outright just yet. Yeah, ignoring that as he makes that move to the crimp. Looks straight forward. Clip in, but we're nearing the point now where a lot of athletes go, so watch him. <laughs> Last blue slopey pocket coming up for the left hand. He's just really calm while he's climbing. Nothing nothing looks rushed. Like He doesn't look like he's on a World Cup final. It's just going through the motions almost. Even as he's looking tired and fatigued, he, he's just like really calm the whole way through. It's true, his elbows and his face don't really line up. No. <laughs> right, well, those elbows go way back as he tries to bring a left foot up, shakes out the left hand desperately. <laughs> And he wants something. He was looking for maybe a knee or a better position to rest in. Gonna get that fit up nice and tight, coming into a bit more of a comfortable position. Right, right hand on the sloper. Matches it. And those black balls are beckoning. Getting that clip in early is really smart. It means that he can just sort of power through, uh, hopefully to the high point if he's if he's still feeling good. Yeah, he's doesn't have to worry about it as he's moving forward. Right, here we go. One move up to the ball. Gets the right hand, cuts loose for a sec. Left heel in. And matches the sloper. He's aiming for 49 plus. He's on 49 now, so he's close. But now he stops, hesitates. And he slides off that right hand too. OK, so likely go to count back for that position then. Yeah, it should be a plus, I think. I would imagine so. Yeah, so Gita Cow back there will put him to the top. We'll wait for the leaderboard to be updated. And if the results changed, by the way, there can be appeals lodged. They're provisional until otherwise known. So if something suddenly happens, that's usually why it is. We have got a system where we're trying to find out from the judges about appeals. Right, so let's watch this run. That was a swing, two hands on it, nice and easy through. Crossing away from that very small blue jib with the left hand, and then this is where he suddenly ran out of steam at the top. A little dry fire off that left hand, I think, but yeah, good fight. Looks like he put it all in. Absolutely did. We'll wait for confirmation of the scores. And Hannes Pullman, the only non-Japanese athlete, is out next. So, three to go before we start to work, well, we know what our podium is, but now we can start to work out where the positions might be as we get deep into this competition. Hannes Pullman comes out. A very popular member, as you can hear. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, seeing him in the sea of Japanese climbers as well, like maybe being that little point of difference, people are going to be really uh, intrigued to see what he what he can put forward. His climbing in semifinals was really exceptional. Um, it was so cool to see like kind of the old Hannes back. I think it's been a little bit since he's had that really uh, standout performance. He was quite consistently like in finals and close to finals and uh, dipped out a little bit, but 
yeah, this weekend he's been on fire. Yeah, he really is having a comp of a lifetime here. Certainly the underdog on paper. Last finals, 2019, so we'll have to see. Uh, aiming for 49 plus, that was Taisa Homer's new high point. Same as Yoshida, but due to count back, that's why the position is decided like that. All right, Hannes, this is the move that everyone seems to have done slightly differently. He goes for that stretch, palming down with the left hand, and then a catch with the left palm. Yeah, Hannes is, is quite tall. He's maybe the tallest athlete in this final. Um, so, yeah, for him, he's kind of afforded the capacity to be able to make that move a little bit more static and controlled, um, which kind of looked a little bit more tenuous, actually, than what the other athletes had done, so not necessarily an advantage. Yeah, he is the tallest by a couple of centimetres, so you're right. No problems with the jump as well. Able to keep his feet down low and get a little back on this hold now before he moves on. Just wonder if he might have a bit of magic in him this weekend and can find something. He's looking for this knee, wraps himself around the volume. He is a little bit of a, another one of those sort of classic lead climbers as well. Um, and we tend to love the Priançon venue, love the wall, the style of the routes here, the whole way through the comp have been really endurancey and resistancey, and I think that's, uh, that's his bread and butter, really. I don't understand anyone who could enjoy being pumped, but I will believe you. We're a, we're a rare breed. <laughs> that's one way of describing it. Lead specialists. It, yeah. <laughs> All right, Hannes cuts loose, then gets the heel back onto the walls. He goes up towards these pinches. Not as good as Elliot, remember, especially this big one coming up. And he's got a clip to make off it as well. Does it with a high heel. Good flexibility for a tall man as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's like a very well-trained, well-rounded athlete, I think. And super strong. He can, the sort of bolder moves that he can pull are really exceptional. Having a little trouble so far with the sequence, um, figuring out his feet. Yeah, he tried to wrap those feet around. But Look. still flowing through. He's looking good. He'll look forward to the rest that's coming up, I think. He's trying to find something. He hasn't got that jib in yet. He does it without. But looking very pumped here. He's got a low draw he's got to get in as well. Look at those feet. It's going to be really tricky to make this clip from here, I think. Just look at that left hand. How that's still on, I don't know. Trying to get something back. Really mincing through, start to hear a little scream coming through on the microphone. Yeah, you know when he's getting to the end because he starts shouting. Get a little stem, quick sh shake and uh, straight through. Well, this could be it for Hannes. He's fighting hard and he makes it. Every move is a scream though for him. High, high right foot, trying to shake out, gets the left hand up. And now a massive drop knee to fit into that space. Gets that left foot up, weight right over his feet. Still hanging on, still going, but he's going to have another little battle, I think, to get this clip in. If, I mean, how he's still on, I don't know. He's ignoring that draw. He's going for points now. And Pops the off. thumb. <laughs> Exceptional fight. Not, you know, not maybe the high point he was hoping for, but he was really able to put it all out there in the final and, you know, Hopefully he'll be satisfied. I think so. I mean, his face, he was just full excitement as he came. <laughs> it's funny, you put a camera in that man's face and he kind of shuts down a little bit. He's so expressive otherwise. Exactly, he has yeah. These, he has these big wide eyes. <laughs> yeah, I always kind of want that in an interview, but he's very serious with me. But that's yeah. the real side to him, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When he's on the wall, it's uh, a different Hannes for sure. It really is. Well, he enjoyed that final. Waves to the crowd, takes a moment to soak in that atmosphere. <laughs> and a little bow, why not? Well, let's have a look at his run. This was the jump down low, launched over. As we know by now, as long as you commit to it, it's not too bad. And this was the move we started to struggle. Eventually got the wrap in. Yeah, he just had like a very different style, I think, to the other athletes on, on those sections of the routes. And, you know, it just take, took a little bit more energy out of him, I think. Yeah, he did. Head in his hands for a moment, but then the smile lit up his face. Good performance from Hannes. And just two athletes to go before we know our podium finishes. Uh, we wait. Mashihiro Huguchi, as he comes out onto the stage, 
He was seventh in Innsbruck, but since then, 21st and 26th. And we're looking for a return here. Top eight in Briançon at least. 30 years old as well, so definitely showing, you know, climbing is not necessarily a young man's game. Thank goodness. I know, I know. I'm like, I'm not exactly one of the young ones anymore. I still have some really big goals. And I'm like, yeah, no, look at him go. Like 30, 32, older, 36. Jank like, him. Yeah, absolutely. 34 last weekend. Oh, for sure. That was just like one of my highlights as a spectator was uh, seeing her back in finals and back on the top step. Like, who who would have thought, you know? Yeah, it was crazy. Do go watch that Chamonix comp if you haven't already. Last weekend, we're moving through a lot of comps at the moment. Mashihiro gets the high right foot using that press method, but a bit of a pop needed and then a palm down usually to steady this swing. And there it is. And he's still up on the volume. Looks at the jump, just takes a moment to chalk up. He'll go for the launch, sets himself, kicks the left leg, easy in. Coming over with the left hand on this one instead of the right, looking for that knee bar. But he, yeah, gets it in, got a nice little knee scum, not too much weight in his hands. Will that help his arms, even just that slight motion, that little press? Yeah, I think it can take a lot of, if you manage to do it successfully, it can take a lot of weight, even just like a little bit of a scum on the wall. Um, but like I said before, like, Nothing takes as much energy as like looking for a rest or a knee bar that isn't there. So it's quite easy to uh, mess around for a little bit too long and, and, and waste a ton of juice on something that was not necessary. Yeah, and we saw him dropping back down to shake out in a different position. And he's into the orange volumes now. No chance really to stop before you get to the head wall. Ideally, you're always making that uh, forward progress. Any, any backwards movement is usually as the result of some kind of error. So, I'm going to try to minimize that. Yeah, and he's wrapped his foot, and yeah, there we go. Has to adjust because of the rope. Perhaps a bit careless. Maybe could have flicked that before, saved himself a movement. Yeah, like we said before, it's definitely one of those routes where it's less about the individual movements and more about the, uh, the sort of subsequential flow of yeah, this move. Total Min of it all. Yeah, exactly. Minimizing yeah. the mistakes, but we've also seen, you know, some athletes will look absolutely terrible one minute and then bring it all <laughs> back the next. Um, yeah, really mincing that crimp. Elbow's already coming up a little bit. Yeah, I don't think he's 100% comfortable yet. He had that moment where he down climbed to find a better resting position. And although he's got through this, to me, it looks like he's very tense on the wall. For sure, for sure. But I think if he can, we've seen with the other athletes looking tense through this section, and they've been able to get a little bit back after this. But yeah, that's, elbows are really high, really starting to fight. But coming into the clever headboard. right toe he's got in. Yeah, yeah, using everything to his advantage. Hannes looking up right now. This is where he could find a moment, but he's not. And well, now he rests. I feel like he's, this is the first time he's really stopped, apart from that chalk up on the jump. And a big unwind. Yeah, the more you need to rest, the less you're going to be able to as well, you know? Yeah, I think that just the size of the feet here save a few athletes. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, despite the fight, he's into the head wall and now gets a chance on these slopers. Seventh at the moment, 35th, and he's got a 49 plus. Moving back down again, trying to get a little bit more chalk through this quite complex section. It's hard to know if it's a lock, if it's an undercling, if it's a crimp. Yeah, it's like it's, you never really know from the ground if that top hole's gonna be just a blocker or it's gonna be useful in the sequence. All right, he's into the slopers though. Yeah, because there's a lot of chalk on it, but I think it's more chalk for this move. He's trying to shake that right hand up. Bumps into the crimp. Elbow high. This could be the moment. He's setting for a jump and he does fall. Yeah, you could see it coming for a while, but brilliant from him. Yeah, fantastic fight. But again, that sort of subtle sum of little errors, little mistakes or misreads. And then, yeah, it, it makes him have to fight a lot earlier than maybe some of the athlete, other athletes had to. Well, because of that climb, that means that Taisa Homa and Satoni Yoshida were guaranteed medals. Absolutely. With one yeah. climber to go. And it's going to be a guaranteed 
three Japanese podium as well with Hannes Pumin in sixth place at the moment, which happened in Play Ensemble a few years ago as well, I think. Okay, there we go. I was trying to look if it was going to be a new record or something, but I haven't got any stats on that one, so I don't think so. Well, this is the top sequence that gave him a bit of trouble at the end. Had the crimp in, tried to bunch into the jib on that no-tex, and it couldn't hold it. So one climber to go. Serato Anraku will come out onto the stage next. Probably the paper, the favourite on paper. And the uh, B layer just getting the rope down for the wall as we reset for Serato in a couple of seconds. The lights now lighting up our wall. A bit of orange on that. And I've been told there's some kind of a light show between the men's and the women's finals later ah, on. Ah, interesting. Okay. We did see a lot of uh, fireworks over the last couple of days with Bestie Day. Yes. Um, which was interesting. Yeah, behind the wall, there's a, there's a castle-type structure in Brian Sun, and they were going off behind the wall. And thank you to everyone who messaged me to let me know. I'd sort of forgotten what day it was, so I didn't realize the, uh, the French bank holiday it was today. Oh, but. yes. I was reminded uh, at 5 a.m. this morning, <laughs> music playing outside my window, so... <laughs> that was fun. Do they not know who you are? Unbelievable. Oh, no, I know, right? How rude. I'll send someone next time. We'll be all right. All right, Serato gets going. He is surely one to watch for the feet, uh, this man, as we go into the world champs. I think at the moment, if I was to pick my uh, possible Olympic qualifier places from the world champs, I'd have to say him and Toby are right up there. Yeah, they're definitely in with a good shot, for sure. Like, just showing the consistent performances across both disciplines um, for the for the lead boulder combined is is so so important um, yeah so I would say both of them are in with that that really good shot and probably all eyes on uh, on burn trying to secure one of the early positions not having to go through the later more drawn out sort of qualification processes as well exactly well I mean you might be in a situation where you leave it so last minute it's a couple of weeks before the Olympics yeah absolutely if you're qualifying through the through the OKS next year it's a really tight game for sure and stressful because it's gonna have to be a I think it's a sum of the whole yeah. series so yeah you won't know until quite close to game day yeah, it's going to be a full-on year next year in 24 as we build towards Paris. And so Tony, sorry, Serato Anraku here gets the toe in, jumps, cuts loose. And he looked so comfortable during yesterday's semi-finals. Barely looked like he was breathing on the route. Yeah, super calm, collected, mature climber, especially given he's uh, not very old at all. No, 16, unless he's out of birth, which I don't think he has. Yeah, 16 still. Hasn't won on lead yet. Third in Chamonix, sixth in Vila, fourth in Innsbruck. So up in the top 10 every time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well and truly capable of it. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see, looking good so far. He hasn't made too many mistakes. Hasn't really looked uncertain just yet. No, and he finds that blue jib with the left, comes into the undercling. Shaking out their left, you can see all the athletes gathered on the black diamond chairs down at the bottom where the lights coming from the backstage. That's where they are. Serato, meanwhile, is at the head wall break point from 40 degrees to 30 degrees. It will still feel very overhanging on his arms. Looking chill, looking relaxed. He'd likely know that. Oh, yeah, nice little knee scum there as well. That's really cool. That'll be, yeah, I think that'll be saving a lot of juice. Also, that sort of like little frog position he's got on the on that lower volume as well is allowing him to put a lot of weight through both feet. Yeah, he looks comfortable. And that's what he's holding on to, though. Bad slippers, but look how casual he is. He's got his leg pressed right against it. Yeah, often often in World Cups I find the, the best holds are usually where you find the worst rests. It's it's often got to do with the body position rather than just the quality of the holds themselves. Usually if you've got a jug or something, it's going to be like this really ugly move. But uh, yeah, he's able to put his weight through these big foot holds on some less than good holds and, and get more back than he might from shaking out one arm on a jug, you know? Yeah, I do. And it's good timing from him. He rested enough and then just launched through that sequence. Setters are expecting to lose a couple there. And everyone threw it cleanly. Yeah, I guess it just speaks to the uh, the caliber of the climbers in the final, even though these sort of 
big names might be missing, it's still like, for the root setters, they're still having to really bring their A game to split the field. Yeah, no change for them. It's there's so many. I think it was 16 men or, or 16 women, but it was 16 men or 16 and 18 women, I think, who have been in finals from the semi-final round. So it's still experience. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Super high level of climbing. Yeah. All right, well, we could be watching Serato climb towards gold here. He's got to keep it together through this section, though. Moves up to fifth place with 43. Looking so comfortable so far. Again, yeah, no issues. Looks at the clock to check. He's got plenty of time. But you can see the slopers are coming. Makes the quick draw. Doesn't need to worry about that anymore. Oh, and for the first time we see him, well, forget that, he just bumps up with the right hand. Yeah, feet off, looking super casual, gets that heel up. I honestly thought he looked a little tired for a sec. And he takes the win. That's it. Incredible. Well, that's his first lead gold. Will we see a top, I guess? I hope so. He's got to launch towards the women's route on the right. Here we go. Big jump. Latches. Incredible. Well, there we go. So he's got to click that draw, though. Gets it in, finally. And that is our gold medalist here tonight. Serato Anraku takes victory. And then Taisei Homa after that. And Satoni Yoshida. Only a matter of time. And uh, yeah, we saw it happen here in Briançon right before the World Championships in Bern. Yeah, really cool stuff. Well, he was the favorite on paper. He was the favorite on the night as well. Serato takes victory once again in terms of IFSC wins. Yeah, that win in uh, Innsbruck. And it was an amazing moment because I think it, it jumped him from fourth, I think it was, into the gold medal position and won him the overall. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, this is going to do wonders for him in the lead rankings as well with, you know, still a couple of uh, lead World Cups to go with Copa and Wujang. So, um, yeah, he's, he's had some pretty consistent performances through the lead season so far. And this win is going to be like a really big jump for him as well. <laughs> Did you see that kid who walked out, one of the volunteers? who Just straight through, straight past, through the athletes. Past all his friends, like, nah, this is my moment. Fair play to him. Well, he'll remember that handshake for a while. And I think Serato will remember this moment for a while. Gold medal for him, surrounded by his teammates. That must be a fun place to be. Let's watch it again. This was the jump down low. Very, very straightforward and simple from him. Held the swing. Rocked up on that heel, had the rope the right way around. And then that was the moment I thought he was tired <laughs> and immediately proved otherwise. Yeah, there was like that little brief moment of hesitation maybe. I thought, oh, I don't know. And then it was, as soon as he hit that next hold, it was super obvious that uh, yeah, he was he was in it to in it for the for the end for the long haul. I think. Yeah. Well, he clipped the chains and a big smile in his face as he comes down. And now, the flower ceremony, not the proper podium that comes later on. But Campbell is your cue to uh, run backstage. Well, not run because they're on stage, so you can take your time. And you're going to interview uh, Serato, and I'll see you in a bit. Awesome. Thank you. Thank see you, you soon. Well, the athletes leave the stage. They will be brought to the backstage area where Campbell is just going now to uh, find Serato and interview him. So men's final is done. Women's coming up next. And an exciting women's route as well, including a foot first sequence. Now let's check the confirmation of the final results, shall we? Well, as expected, Serato and Raku takes the win with a top. Followed by Taisa Homer at 49 plus. Same score with Satone Yoshida with 49 plus. Countback deciding that. Yoshiyuki Ogata wasn't given the plus. He stays on 49 in fourth. Shionomata and Mashihiro Higuchi in sixth. Hannes Puman and then Haruki Umaru makes up our last athlete. Eighth place with 37 plus. Deep into the head wall once again. Uh, it's good to know the story of that final. High once again, these resistance-style routes, meaning the athletes get high up on them. 
more cruxes that build than a single crux that shuts people down. The men's yesterday did have a cruxy sequence, though. So did the women, a lot of them falling on 34 plus. Let's look at some of the highlights from earlier on. Yeah, so some big moments out there on the wall. This jump especially, just one of those moves that was put in to not frighten the athletes, but just unsettle them with their climbing, raise the heart level. And then after that, it was pure endurance and resistance before those balls shut down a few slopey moves up high on the wall. Taisai Hama there coming down second for him. Back on the podium where he belongs after that injury. And then Serato, wow. We know how good he is at bouldering. We knew how good he should be at lead. And tonight in Briançon, he gets his gold. I think a lot of us were waiting for him to achieve. One of the favorites for Bern in a couple of weeks. And there you can see, congratulated by his teammates on the side of the stage. And the women are parading through the auditorium. Yeah, there's a parade of flags, and you can just see it there on your screen, the procession beginning to come through. I think the flags are coming. Cameramen go first. Where are those flags? I can see them. There we go. So flags carried by the nations involved in the finals. A walk towards the lights on the stage. Now Campbell has found Serato and Raku, so let's go down to them to find out a little more. Okay, good. Congratulations on your first ever World Cup victory with an incredible climb and topping the route. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm happy to win a boss. Bola and Reed World Cup. Yeah, amazing, absolutely. Um, what's next for you this season? You have the World Championships coming up in Bern. Will you be there? Uh, Will you be in the World Championships in Bern, in Switzerland? Uh, uh, I, uh, I also win. I also, I win, I also win. World Championships, so uh, I practice so yeah, hard. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, so good to hear. Are you feeling good for the next competitions? Mm, uh, in Cop in Copel. Uh, in Copel. Congratulations <laughs> on your win. Uh, I'll let you uh, take some time to soak it in. Uh, yeah, and all the best for all the next competitions. Next competition. Mm, in in, uh, in Korea, uh, I, I do my best to win. <laughs> fantastic. Medal. Uh, get medal. <laughs> yes, fantastic. Okay, well, congratulations again and uh, goodbye. See you later. Uh, see you. <laughs> well, thank you, Campbell. Thank you, Serato. I know he's practicing his English, getting better and better every single day. It'd be great to see him climbing the World Champs in a couple of weeks. And that is a big event. We have everything. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Para climbing, speed, lead, boulder, and boulder, and lead. And that is where our Olympic tickets will be given away. The first chance for us to see our first Olympians. Cannot wait for that moment. And right now, we are waiting for the women. They've done their parade. They're about to be announced onto the stage. So if you're just joining us, welcome to Brianne Song. We're halfway through tonight's entertainment. It's time for the women to climb. They're waiting behind that curtain, going to be announced to the stage. My name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Campbell Harrison, who's just joined me from your interview. What impression did you get from Serato? Uh, he was absolutely stoked. I think he was, he was kind of overwhelmed, kind of speechless. Uh, such, a, such a young climber. 
Um, and I was super impressed that he wanted to do the in uh, interview in English as well, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and I think he did such a great job. And his climbing was was so amazing. And yeah, you could tell that he was, was like so overwhelmed, I think, with what he'd just done. It's crazy because you say he's overwhelmed, but I feel like I'm watching someone who's been doing it for years. And like we're watching the next person coming through oh, with 100%. him. Oh, 100%. I think it's so easy to forget that he's, uh, he's you know, barely not a child anymore, yeah. really. So... Yeah, I was I was like super impressed with his climbing and then super impressed with how he was able to conduct himself in what was you know, it's like such an intimidating environment with in front of all these people. Uh, yeah, so really, really cool, really excited for him. It is indeed. Well here are our women and that's that lady's first finals. Martina Demel just made it into the final supposed to be a hard climb nine A outside. And next up, Camilla Pugier from France. Good to see a French athlete, or well, two French athletes in this final. We had a lot of French climbers yesterday during the semis. Really good to see Camille back on the stage. She smiles and waves. 11th was her best result, so first finals for her as well. And then Vita Lucan, well, no stranger to finals and a good comeback to get yeah. to this stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, kind of just moving from strength to strength, really seeing the, the training start to come back after the injury. And yeah, really nice to see her in finals again. Everyone always talks about styles and climbing. Her, the amount of co-commentators I've got who love watching Vita Lucan climb. Oh, every athlete loves watching Vita Lucan what, climb. And what is it about that? She just has this really, like, powerful... I don't know, structured. She's one of those climbers that you, you watch her climb and you're like, that girl trains, <laughs> you know? Like, it is, uh, she is a, like an athlete at the elite level. It's just so obvious in the way she moves. Athlete's athlete. I like that. Right, Manon Healy from France. She just waved to the crowd. Next to be announced is a lady on her comeback from injury, Molly Thompson-Smith. I remember talking to her in Salt Lake about her leg, her ankle. Yeah, the ankle still gives her a little bit of trouble as well. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I think when she's on the wall, she's able to put that aside. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'm so excited to see Molly. I'm definitely a bit biased. That's uh, fine. She's one of, one of my best friends. So when, uh, when she made finals, I, like, couldn't contain my joy. And so being able to see her again after so many close calls since her last final in 2019 in Chamonix, I think. Um, yeah, so, so, so many ninth places. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ninth, ninth, just way too many. So this is just like such a such a joy to watch her back in the final. Well, it'll be good to see her. Natsuki Tani is on her right, and this is Nanoha Kume from Japan, one of two Japanese athletes in this final. And then finally, a lady who is well, she's won here, 2021, when a lot of people. Well, the Olympians were away. She came out of nowhere, smashed that final, got a gold medal, and she might do it here again this well, evening. Well, yeah, she's absolutely uh, coming out of nowhere again. She really hasn't had a season that she's been very happy with at all. I think there've been a lot of uh, a lot of mental struggles trying to weigh up, you know, all the effort that goes into competing at this level and not performing how you would ex what you would expect of yourself. But, you know, in Chamonix, she saw herself back in the semifinals, and I think that little bit of confidence has, like, really brought her back on form. And so, yeah, yeah, I think you're totally right. You can see just the way she's walking around at the moment is yeah. different somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's this, uh, like, sense that she knows that she belongs here um, that's, uh, like, such a, such a nice thing to see an athlete really, like, come back into their own and climbing with joy and yeah really yeah. cool to see no i agree well there she is on the front of your screen talking with the two japanese athletes about the sequence she's wrapped up this was earlier on in the day she's kept that down jacket on throughout the evening and it is chilly here in the stadium now the good conditions for the athletes those slopers will start to work and a very important time for the athletes to read the route try to work out the different sequences out there and just figure out what on earth you're doing up there on that wall, 16 meters to the top of the wall part, 18 meters of climbing throughout. Two French athletes, as you'd expect, reading the route together. Figuring out the moves, you can see where they're at on the wall with those hand movements, you can like read it. Molly standing in the middle, binoculars out. 
she was uh, telling me that she just bought the binoculars prior to this competition and she came out to semi-finals and we're standing behind the wall and she's like, yeah, I've never really like used these before, so probably should have practiced, but oh well, like, off we go. <laughs> Um, she's good at practice. She practices speed taping. Yeah. So she should practice binocular speed watching, perhaps. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's a skill. All right, Martina Demmel will be out first. She's uh, qualified in last position from Germany. And Camilla Bouget, Vita Lucan, Manon Healy, Molly Thompson Smith, Natsuki Tani, Nanoha Kume, and Eliska Adamovska will finish things off for this evening. That's our top eight. And the women's route, quite interesting. There's a foot first sequence just by the head wall. Ah, okay, that makes sense. I, was, um, I wasn't quite sure of that sequence, but as soon as you said foot first, I, I knew exactly the one you were talking about, so that's going to be really cool to see. I think we might have a little jump as well before the yes, first Yes, I think yeah, there's a jump before it, yeah. So exciting stuff. And that's on the right of your air. You can see there the... Uh, Darkness has descended, lights have come out, and we're seconds away. So a little delay, the climber we've been told is being tied in right now, so Martina Demmel is a couple of moments away from Team Germany. Hannah Moyle, a few people have been asking about her, she decided to skip this competition, focus on the world champs in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been such a tight schedule for so many athletes. And I think, you know, yeah, the Olympics really comes to mind with this sort of stuff. A few of us starting the season a bit later, others starting the season early and then taking out some events in the middle. It becomes quite quite strategic, really. Yeah, it seems to be sort of points and energy. People are trying to balance it. You know, they want to qualify. They want to get enough on the board. Yeah. But, yeah, as you say, you've got to have a moment to step away and reset. Yeah. So many things to consider. Enough points for the OQS next year, the Olympic Qualifier Series. You need enough points for the Continental Championships for some continents. You want to be able to do self-justice on the World Cup circuit, at the World Championships. Um, it's a, it's a, a tricky balancing act. Uh, there's a lot to consider. And the Oceana Qualifiers for you, yes. are you excited about that event coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like, obviously a little bit nervous, as you might expect, but um, it's... Yeah, really, really looking forward to, to having that opportunity to, you know, maybe qualify to become an Olympian or, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a bit of a scary thought, of course, but I'm really looking forward to it. Well, perhaps your best chance to get one of those tickets as well. Yeah, I would say so. I think we have this, like, really u unique position, um, yeah, where we have this very niche little event in which we can qualify. Um, and so, yeah, in some vein, it's... Uh, like a really exciting opportunity. It's also sometimes a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, there's very much that expectation on a few of the athletes that we should be, you know, performing at that event and, and aiming for the Olympic selection. But yeah, seeing some really cool stuff happening in, in the crowd right now. Everyone's got their phones out. Yeah, they did this in Chamonix as well. So the MC gets everyone to hold up their phones and do that. Wave it around a bit, but it's uh, it's spectacular. We're sitting right at the front of the stage in the commentary box. So if we just turn our heads to the left, we can see the audience. And from the front, it's amazing view. Huge, huge sea of people. The venue looks absolutely full, which is a uh, it's a it's a big venue as well. There's a lot of space. So. Well, Martina Demmel has just walked on to that light show. Yeah, what a reaction from her. She walked through those doors and immediately into those bright lights. And Martina, a very just solid, nice person on yeah, the circuit. Yeah, so lovely. That sounded like a criticism of a solid, nice, but you know what I mean? She's no, got that, yeah, no, I know what you mean. That yeah, peace, yeah. that calm about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super lovely, super friendly. Um, when she realized she qualified yesterday, she literally shot into the air out of her seat. Um, I don't think she expected that it would be on her wildest dreams that she'd be making finals yesterday. i uh, so excited to see her pulling through to the next round. Yeah, and you never know. I mean, she's got no pressure on her shoulders. She yeah. can do anything. So keep watching because uh, we've seen people pull special things out before. Exceptional rock climber. I think she, she spends a lot of her time climbing outside, actually. And uh, competition climbing is a more recent um, sort of... Uh, focus of hers uh, yeah and, and she really took to it super fast she's a very very talented very strong climber 
Yeah, she's another one to watch, and it seems like the field's very stacked this year. All right, so first sequence of moves fairly straightforward, the first three clips, but she's coming up to a bit of a jump here, up towards that blue hold. Yeah, Good feet on the right. Yeah, that, that volume is quite big. You can't quite see um, how positive it is on the stream, I think, but yeah, it's quite a nice big foot. She's got a nice big jog. And then, um, yeah, I think it should be similar to the men's, like nothing too crazy, but enough to get you a, a little bit nervous maybe as you approach into the steeper section of the wall. Yeah, from that angle, there's another blue volume around the corner of the white volume, which is going to go for the right hand. You can see getting it there. But yeah, straight forward, straight up and in. Yeah, nice little compression position, gets the clip in, no troubles. And now this route sort of wanders over to the left of the wall, finishes up in the middle, which is on the far right of it now. Precise with the feet, she's just got a jib on that right toe. Quite a long stretch up for that clip as well. Yeah, looking good so far. It looks like a bit of a, a muscly, muscly route through this section. Yeah, the feet run out here. And she's got to go over towards the yellow pocket. The blue jib next to it is for the heel. The pocket is where you're aiming for. She's going to come down to this volume and then, yeah, big, really powerful looking move through this next sequence. And we saw a move similar to this in the women's semi final. They had to throw a right hand over. And Martina is struggling to find the sequence here. Bumps the left hand. Looks over towards it. It's a long way away, as you can see. Ah, uh, yeah, it comes into this volume and looking a little bit better set up for this next move now. No troubles in the end. Yeah, I think it just seemed a long way for her. You get, trying yeah, to gauge the distance. I'm not sure if she remembered the blue hold on the volume, maybe, or she didn't see it initially. Like we said before, six minutes is a really short period of time to memorize an entire 50-move route. And so in the moment, it can be quite easy to, to miss something. But she's got a little opportunity to get some juice back now. This is one of those instances where the handhold is really good, but the feet are quite poor. So whether or not you rest there for too long is a very strategic decision. Yeah, and I thought there'd be a rest on this heel, but you can see now it's not the best resting position. She's got the heel actually in the pocket rather than the blue dish or the jib. And now an awkward move. You've got to go towards the blue one up high like she does, then cross under with the left. And we're entering this feet first sequence here. Yeah, it gets the clip in early because I think it might be quite hard to establish the clip once you move through the next sequence. Yeah, you'd be way past it, wouldn't you? All right, so she gets set. She sees the feet first method and commits to it. But you've got to rotate all the way from her head being on the left to her head being on the right so you can mantle up towards the next side pull. Yeah, really good climbing from her so far. Yeah, squeezing herself into that position. Holding the top of the volume, and you can see she's rotated around now, but the side pull is facing the opposite way. <laughs> and a little bit of a knee scum there on the part of the volume that isn't textured. Threw her head back then, and the crowd got behind it. This mantle, though, is nasty. She does it, elbows in, gets the heel, and now you sort of stand up underneath yourself. And this, uh, this volume comes out quite far away from the wall, so there's potential to get a little back here, but she decides to keep moving. Yeah, the setter said you can stand around on that thing for a while, but it's the, the angle of the wall pushing you back means it's not as comfortable and she falls going left. Really good performance, I think, for her first ever World Cup final. Uh, 34, 34 plus, I think. So, yeah, I'm sure she'll be happy with that and happy with the competition overall. Yeah, first climber done. Martina Demel smiles, looks bad up, tries to undo the rope. And we have our first high point just on the head wall. And things do ramp up from that move she fell on. Comes those orange style pinches later on. All right, Martina will go towards the left of the stage. Next up will be Camilla Pouget, but let's just see a little highlight of this. So into the jump, nice and easy with the left hand and right hand catch. That move she thought about for a while, but when she committed to it, didn't make it look too bad. And this is where she fell. Running out of steam on that move to the left. Yeah, quite high on the route, but still a lot of climbing left to go. So excited to see what comes next. Yeah, it's another one that burns through the bottom and then kicks in in the head wall.
All right, here we go. Next up, Camilla Pouget comes onto the stage. Another first time finalist as well. And I think another one that's been a, a long time coming. She is absolutely one of the strongest female climbers in the French competition scene and maybe hasn't had the best uh, selection events so far. Um, hence why we haven't seen her in as much of the season. Uh, but yeah, seeing her in a final is really cool and yeah, no surprises to me, honestly, that she's able to kind of perform at this level. We've had a few new French athletes come through. I'm thinking Flavie Coho in bouldering uh, in Prague unexpectedly perhaps making the final, but good to see her get those points on the board. Yeah, huge, huge depth of talents through through France, you know. Might not be like Japan where every athlete is making the finals, but they have just like countless climbers who are potential who have a semi-final potential as well. So you know when you come to a French World Cup that it, those semi-final spots are going to be hard fought with the uh, with the extra quota positions that France holds. I tend to mention Japan and France in the same sentence at the moment just because of what you're saying, that depth yeah. in the squad. Yeah, they really seem to invest in their athletes and um, yeah, they've got some really, really strong climbers and hopefully yeah, Camille can put forward a really good performance on this route as well. All right, Camille is eyeing up the next dish above her head setting herself up for the jump. As Campbell said earlier, that right foot is good. You can fully stand on it. Another uh, another climber you'll notice climbs in socks. Has said she's always climbed in socks her whole life. She's never known any different. Um, and it, yeah, it definitely doesn't seem to hold her back. Where did this come from? I, d I don't know. Right, big jump just actually. She almost got herself caught in the rope as she went up for it. Yeah, this one's a little more uncomfortable than the men's jump. The men's jump looked quite flowy. This is a little bit more of like a, not ugly, but sort of, yeah, you have to kind of gristle through it a little bit. Yeah, the men's, I think it's the direction. The men's, because they jumped to the left, there was no rope to get in the way. They just went. Yeah, for sure. Kemi, oh well, as well as uh, Martina did here, just taking a moment to figure this out. Very thuggy. Clips over her hand. And she will shake out this hold. It's a good one. Changes the toe to a heel. Yeah, and obviously remembers the uh, holds available to her out left as well, which is going to make this next section a lot more efficient. Yeah, you can see the difference. Martina couldn't see that. There are tick marks on the volume, but oh, just watching that swing. I guess white tick marks on a white volume, though, <laughs> not super obvious. No. <laughs> oh, she's into the pocket. Change those feet, keeping them high, and doesn't hang around for too long. Just bolt protectors out on the left. They're not feet, total no tech. So she's got to use those feet we can see on screen. Hits the jib with the left hand, and now she'll take a moment to shake that foot in the pocket. Elbows up a little bit, gets that clip in. This next hold looks pretty good, though, I find. Yeah, you feel like if she can make it to that lip, she can shake out again. She's a move away. But you've got to go feet first, remember. She goes for the big kick. And now almost upside down. Well, she is now. It's practically a bat hag. Yeah, a really nice little rest there, getting a lot back. Zoom in shot of the, of the socks. <laughs> I'm more concerned about her chalk falling out. She was very inverted for a second. And, now and you can see like just how steep this section is as well with the, the way her chalk bag is hanging like straight down opposite to her body. It's uh, yeah, really, really steep and then starts to even out a little bit more in this last section. Yeah, those two toes will feel good. She looked at the clock through her own arms there and she's looking for maybe a knee, no, maybe not the knee, but she changes the heel into a different position. Reaches over with the right and she'll start rotating around now. Being more comfortable than Martina did at this stage. Yeah, I think she, she, you know, she hasn't really made too many mistakes coming through. She probably was able to get quite a lot of energy back on that toe hook. And she's able to relax a little bit here. Knee bar in as well. Um, smiling. Looks like she's really enjoying, enjoying climbing in front of the home crowd. Two minutes left on the clock, so probably not wanting to hang around for too much longer. Um, but it's always a fine balancing act between, uh, like, you know, making sure you use your time as much as you can, but also not running out of it. 
Yeah, running out of it might be an issue if she gets any further, but I guess she's got to recover enough to be able to get further in the first place. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not always a battle for the top. It's, you know, it's a battle for who can get to the highest, and maybe using a little bit of extra time on the rest might be the difference. Oh, she presses up through the black volume. Oh, can't get the flexibility to bring the right toe up. Tries again. Adjust the right hand a little bit more. Yep, sinking over that foot as well. I could feel the muscles in my hip contract as I Going, watched her do that. She's no hands right now as well. She uh, just one hand against the wall to balance her, but otherwise she'd completely let go of any holds. What a feeling that must be. Oh, really she's... starting to fight. Yeah, Pushing she... super hard. What is she trying? She's trying to get a, a heel in. Gets the clip as well. Desperate from her. I think she wanted a double stack knee. She's not going to get much further, surely. She's going to have to jump out for the plus. And she's latched it. For a second, she had it. I think I think there's something Ooh. wrong with her knee. Well, was, see, I don't, was it is in the kick? Or was it before? I think it was before. I think that was when she was pushing her heel against her leg. I think there was maybe like a like a cramp or something was wrong with her knee. Um, yeah, you can see. And she's that's why one she looks really uncomfortable. Ah. So she was she was on the wall. She knew something was wrong, and she kind of had to make that decision to whether or not she kept going. But yeah, something's definitely not not right. No, it's with not. her leg there. Yeah, I mean, it could be a cramp. She's looking like she's stretching it out. I think it might be a cramp style injury. Oh, why is the MC talking to her? Leave her alone. Yeah, I don't think now is the time, frankly. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he leaves rapidly, and we'll stick the cami here. She's got her head and hands. Yeah, I think it might have been cramp because she immediately tried to stretch it out. She's talking to the medical team down on the front. We're watching a replay now. We'll keep you informed. She's still on the stage and is okay, but obviously getting the attention she needs. So this was her run upside down. What a moment that was above the crowd. Mr. Les, now I'm looking for this knee where it might have come. Yeah, because it was the other knee. I thought it was the left for a second, but yeah, it was that right knee, so it must have been before. Yeah. Can't quite see what was wrong, but yeah, the French coach is there as well, or one of them, and I think she's okay to st stand now. Doesn't need the help. Oh, she's under her own steam. Good work, Kami. She waves goodbye. I think must have been cramped there. She's walking okay now, just a bit of a limp. So Kemi is done. She walks across the stage there. You can see a bit of a limp going on, but walking more easily with every step. Hopefully not too serious an injury. She says goodbye to the French crowd. Yeah, like a cramp or maybe something. She really, when she came back down on the ground, she like forced her knees mm. straight, almost as if something in the joint wasn't sitting quite right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can kind of like, not semi disco but you know it sort of shifts in the joint. It's not yeah, quite there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we hope for the best and, and move on to the next athlete. Yeah, Still a, a really good performance from her and, and like some pretty impressive determination to experience that and like and keep pushing. Like she was she her all her mind was entirely focused on just being able to like make those next moves. Yeah, she was not stopping. Good fight from her. All right, well it's the climber's favourite this seems. Vita Lucan is out on the wall. Yeah, no stranger to big try-hard moves. Climbs a little bit like Molly does. Yeah, actually, that's very true. They do have similar styles. Yeah, whenever Molly's with me, she always uh, <laughs> she always goes on about beats, how much she enjoys watching it. Yeah, for sure. Molly also has that, like, you know, like, you just know that they can do one-arm pull-ups for days, both of them. Yeah. Oh, she's got to unleash some strength in the top half of this route, but get through. No pause on the jump, straight into it. Super experienced as well, like this, this uh, contrast, I think, as well. We've seen these first two athletes, very first finals ever in a World Cup. Vita Lucan, who has, I wouldn't even know how many finals in total, lots. Um, so, yeah, and she's just like straight on the wall, straight through, like powering on no problem. Yeah, she's not going to be caught out by a tricky start. No, so. not at all. Yeah, no stranger to finals. She was in the final in Chamonix, of course, in seventh. 
So finest in form, 13th in Vilas, and yeah, her score, her position is getting better and better at every competition. Can she beat seventh? Our third athlete out. The women getting pretty high on this route. Hits the jib the second time, used the intermediate on the volume, and bumps into the second one, which is better. Able to move through really controlled to that yellow little juglet. Some of this must be experience, because when we look at the two athletes previously who are not experienced in finals, and we see Vita just see a move and go, okay, it's that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know. And, and I think that's so, so much of the separation between World Cup athletes is the capacity to just feel sometimes feel frankly like terrible on the wall and just keep moving and keep going and stay composed um, and you know you're climbing not just to not fall off but really like to make the next move and to make progress yeah and look at the difference in time as well if we think of uh, Camille here she was well when she was resting it was coming up to 150 of course Vita hasn't done the move yet hasn't rested but still a bit quicker See the bugs on the wall, that's how good our cameras are. Like a giant sort of fly trap, this wall. <laughs> All right, well, she's immediately into this rotation. She's barely stopped so far. Yeah, no, it's been like a very continuous attempt. Like, I wouldn't say she's going fast by any means, you know, no. she's just got just halfway through her time, but. Um, just good like, pacing. It's, yeah, it's her. been like very calculated pacing. Mm. Half hike to the crowd, half shake out there. Yeah, she's got a good little opportunity to use some time to rest, to get it all back, and then um, a push through like the next technical section and some pumpy climbing for the finish as well. All right, that's to come right now. She's got a rock up mantle through here. Easily brings that right foot up. Yeah, no troubles, doesn't stick around. All right, well, we might double get clip as well. Yeah, big stretch for that clip. Make sure the ropes through the quick draw, jumps out left. And that new high point for New high point, yeah. Oh, but that left is hard. Whoa, so impressive. Just from Vita Lucas. Such strong fingers. Yeah, that's all she's holding on to. Now crosses underneath into an underclink. That left foot for a moment kicking behind it. Sits on the heel. Taking a moment to chalk up. The fight's definitely started, but she's, uh, yeah, she's looking real good so far. All right, she's on to the orange pin. She gets another heel in. Bumping out, she needs to rotate those feet Get through. a little drop knee, probably get the clip through from here. Yep, straight in. Oh, oh she, there's some real pump kicking in now. Yeah, she gets the left hand, but just has to bump into it to adjust. Thumbs in again, locks it off. It's more of a foothold than anything else. She'll want to drop that knee down. That's a better hold though, if she can get her feet high. Such an absolutely stellar fight so far. That was incredible. That was incredible and a big fall as she swings towards the wall. Yeah, she looks stoked with that one and I think she should be. I think that was a really solid performance. Well, you never know, 46, certainly the new high point, might be enough. Three to go, five remaining in tonight's final. Just past 10 o'clock Central European time. Hello, if you're watching, wherever you are in the world, nice to have you along with us. And Vita with a smile on her face. Strong performance from Vita, her night is done. Let's have a look at this bottom jump. Yeah, straight into it, knew the kind of move it was and read it well. Yeah, just like really textbook experienced climbing, well paced, like super hard fought as well. And she did not give up until there was nothing left, I think. Yeah, that was the moment she ignored the draw, took the big whip duck down. Kicked off the wall beneath, then a wave to the crowd. And a celebration for Vita. Okay, Manon Healy is next. Last French athlete out this evening. Mm -hmm. 
So man on 29. Took a bit of a break and came back since then. Has enjoyed a lot of success over the last couple of years. Consistently into semi-finals. And making finals as well. She was 10th in Chamonix, so just outside. Again, looks like uh, Vita didn't receive the plus, likely uh, okay. because she hadn't clipped, so she wouldn't have been able to clip past that point, so she wasn't able to uh, be scored for any progress. But still, yeah, an impressive high point, well, well above the previous best climber. Now we can see her point at the top of the wall there, at number one, indicating that. Yeah, Kami and Martina falling on 34 plus, so the same hold. Cowboy, this must sound like a strange question, but Manon climbs, or no, she doesn't climb in glasses, but you do. I've just started climbing in my glasses. Are you not worried about them falling off? Oh, actually in qualifications, they um, they did get knocked off during, uh, okay. like knocked off one ear during one of the moves. Um, yeah, she sometimes climbs in her glasses, but I don't know, it's something I'm experimenting with now. I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I've never worn contacts before, so. <laughs> okay, so I it's glasses or, or Gla not being able to glasses see. Glasses or everything's just like not so crisp. You <laughs> okay, know? I think you've got the right option. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Manon made the jump look pretty casual up there. The same as uh, Vita, very experienced, knew what was it was all about. And now she'll take a moment on these bigger holds to rest. Another quite experienced finalist as well. Um, she has like a history of pretty pretty strong performances uh, in the World Cup circuit. Making pretty short work so far, remembering all the holds. Confident movement through the like initial sequences of the route, which is you know super important. Uh, for, a, for a good run, like we said before in the men's, you know, it really is about sort of the, the sum of every movement and every decision you make throughout the climb is going to dictate whether or not you have enough juice right at the end to like push for that podium position. Yeah, it was good commitment from her on that. Now gets the heel in on the jib. Into the good side pulls and she will take a moment to chalk up before going into the slopey section. And the crowd know what's coming. They're currently sitting patiently watching, but now you can hear the screams start to build. The French crowd really make it known for their own climbers, like standing behind the wall waiting to climb yesterday. Oh, that was a big Incredible. slip, though. Yeah. Yeah, 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 a little bit insecure there, but she should hopefully be able to like get into one of these couple of rest positions we've seen. Yeah, she'll, she'll get to breathe here, so not quite as dramatic, I don't think, as it looked there for a second. But she's got the toe locked in. Needs to get a bit higher on the hold later on she, after she's rested. She doesn't really have a lot of rubber on the top of her shoe by the looks of things. That's a very good point, unless it's that blue Oh, actually, surface. actually, it might just be colored rubber. Yeah, I think it is. A new, new model to me, that one. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with the brand, uh, with the with those shoes, but yeah, able to make it work nevertheless. Yeah, and finding the knee bar that we saw people playing with the idea of first one to do it properly. Yeah, for sure. It looks like she'll probably try to get something back here before she moves on. Two and a half minutes left on the clock, so likely enough time to make a good punch through the head wall. Yeah, stands up. It's good that edge is as good as it is, because it's going to get heavily layered up with chalk by the end of it. Taking another little almost no hands sec uh, no hands rest on that little volume sequence and then yeah, straight through to the next holds. Alright, so Manon launches left, no problems for her. But this is where yeah that move was where Vita started to struggle and you can see Manon moving a bit quicker. Really bicepy underclean sequence there. Everyone by the way has just surrounded our commentary box watching Manon Healy. People are coming out of the woodwork here as she gets closer to the high point. 38 at the moment. Hits the pinch with the right hand. Starting to fight really hard, getting those feet up. What an atmosphere. Every move, the crowd get louder. 
gets the right foot drilled in. 42 approaching that 46. Fighting hard. Oh, but it falls. I don't know if she'll get the plus for that. Yeah, nevertheless, I think um, just shy of, yeah, Vita's high point. But uh, yeah, it went, it was like right down to her very last leg, I think, on that route. So hopefully she's just, yeah, satisfied with, uh, with her climb. All right, well, that signals the halfway point in the women's final. Serato Anraku has already won the men's earlier on this evening. And Manuel Healy did a good job for Team France as she exits the stage. So, four to go. Molly Thompson Smith, Natsuki Tani, Nanoha Kume, Eliska Adamovska to come. This was Manon's run. Easy into the jump once more, launching backwards. Bump over to the pocket. Into what looks like a pretty good hold, but remember the angle of the wall. That was the slip. It wasn't much of one, just dropped her down a little. Found the knee bar rest, of course. Got that move on the second swing. And from then on, it was just a resistance trying to fight the pump before finally she fell. Yeah, so, so far, 44 solid for Manon, so no plus thus far. We'll see if that comes into play, um, if it makes a difference between positions. Maybe there'll be an appeal, but, you know, for now, I'm sure the French team are just sitting on that, like, ready to go if need be. Yeah, if you have, if you want to know more about the appeal process, go and watch the uh, Vila semi-final. I had Malik, the Canadian head coach, on the commentary box, and he uh, was telling us all about that. So go and watch that if you haven't seen it. And we'll have a little break in proceedings here as you wait for the next four women to enter. And I think, Campbell, we're about to get another light show. <laughs> yeah. Well, right commentator, now, all powerful commentator is uh, riling up the crowd. Well, hey, we're watching. And that was the end of Martina Demel's run. She came down, waved goodbye to the crowd's first athlete out. Kami had an injury near the top. We think maybe Cramp fought through that before she fell, but down low, she was looking good. That move upside down above the crowd. And then you'll see her, it was the right leg that was causing her problems. So it wasn't that kick and yeah, grab that knee area. And it's worrying that it was the knee she grabbed as well. Yeah, it could be, I know, like I've, I've had things in the past where when you're really like rocking over one knee, the, the the sort of the mass of the calf and the hamstring can kind of press the joint sort of out of place. And I think if that happens in like quite an extreme case, it can be quite painful. Mm. Is it maybe like something along those lines. Um, but fortunately, like, yeah, she was back on her feet and she didn't look to be in like too much pain, but yeah, hopefully check in with her after the comp and like make sure it's nothing too extreme. Yeah, we wish her well for sure. We saw Vita Lucan flying there and finally Manon Healy Climber number four. Second position at the moment with four to go. Bit of a bump and a swing there. Kick the feet over. That drop down we saw. And straight resistance to the walls at the top before she fell. Okay, well that's the story so far. Four to go. And the crowd now with the lights off. They were just waving them in the air again. I think they've been asked to hide them because now they're lit up with red as Molly Thompson-Smith enters the stage. And Campbell, one of your best friends on the circuit. So oh yeah, I'm. I uh, yeah, I might like be like very quiet the whole. Please, way you do whatever I'll, you want. <laughs> I'll just be like watching with bated breath. That's but. absolutely fine. We will we will feel your emotion. I just, if you're listening at home, Campbell just sat up very straight next to me, and he's certainly a bit more nervous. Yeah. Uh, hoping for a good one, but like still so, so excited to see her in finals again. Molly Thompson Smith is underway for Great Britain, climbing in fourth. She'll hope this bottom section settles the nerves down. It's been a while since she's been into the finals. Had a horrendous ankle break, falling off a boulder during a session that she was told specifically not to go on. She, uh, she went climbing outside and 
took a fall and the ankle just completely facing, the foot was facing completely the wrong way. Um, it was super gnarly and uh, yeah, really unfortunate. She's She has definitely been one in the past with some pretty extreme injuries. Yes, um, I, I remember looking at her finger laid open on Instagram when she had that operated yeah, on. Yeah, she had a triple pulley rupture in her ring finger. Yeah, it makes that jump. Not too many issues so far. But yeah, she's uh, she's made some exceptional comebacks. Yeah, and it was interesting to see her choose bouldering as her comeback. And she said to me, look, it, it does hurt. And you could see her limping off from rounds. Much happier on a lead rope, obviously, where the falls, the impact is less. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, there's not much of a choice. If she wants to go to the Olympics, which I, I know is one of her goals, then, yeah, she's got to have uh, lead and boulder results in the World Cup circuit preparing for the World Champs and the Olympic Qualification Series. So, um, yeah, fortunately, she was able to get surgery on the ankle, come back fast enough to be able to put in some, like, decent results on the boulder circuit. But lead is really where she, where she shines. Yeah, she does. She has that ability to turn on boulder mode as well and power through sequences. And Molly has to get high up on the wall here if she wants to beat Vita's score. Using that left heel well, use it twice as she moves through it. And that's an interesting yeah, right Yeah, funky toe. little toe hook there. I like to watch a climber do something kind of techy and geeky like that. Yeah, for sure. Something that not everyone will appreciate, but if you're a climber watching that, you'll get that kind of move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those clever little, little subtleties that can mm. make the difference. Well, she made the move to the pocket. Look good. Now it's got to go out left. Has to trust that heel. It's locked in as she moves her hand around the rope. Yeah, it takes the heel into the yellow hold instead. Yeah, a few of them have done that. I think it just allows you to be in a better body position. A heel slightly closer to her. Had a couple of moves where it kind of looked like she had to fight a little bit, but she's she's not looking too pumped yet. I think she's still got plenty of gas in the tank. Yeah, occasionally, Molly tends to need a, a big move to sort of settle her into the competition, yeah. and that jump won't have been it down at the bottom. Another, uh, yeah, a little bit of uncertainty here maybe, but yeah, it makes it work again. Kicking with the left to make sure that right hand is in. A little bit less time on the clock than the last couple athletes. Um, yeah, just coming in with a bit under three minutes to go. But she's found that knee bar too. Can she make it work though? She can with the right leg. But comes out of it, so not the best for her shape maybe. But now she looks like she's gonna go upside down as well. Yeah, she comes straight through and then maybe try to rest again on the way back round. Yeah, that heel keeping her on. That's a better resting position for her. Yeah, two minutes left, so she'll be aware that, you know, she want to get something back, but she can't really afford to uh, spend too long doing so. Oh, and that was a big stretch. She has to go. There you go. She's read that hand on the top of the volume as well, which I think is quite crucial for this mantle. Yeah, she needed more height, and look at that straight away. It makes a difference. All right, she has the heel in. Now she'll be able to shake it, sitting on the black volume. Into the pinch, makes that clip, and then... Well, not resting for that long, but looks for this big jump. Oh, so powerful. Doesn't need the... Oh, oh, but she falls. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I think she just didn't quite have the left hand. Like, it looks like her fingers went all the way around the hold. I think she was just about to make an adjustment, and then, yeah, the, the hand dry fired. Oh, because she made the jump to the left, and it brilliant. Didn't need the kick down onto the volume like everyone else has. Yeah, I think she was, like, ready to... Ready to power through, just needed to like get the hold a little bit better. That yeah, that's that's a bummer. Um, yeah, yeah you can see the disappointment. She knew she had more. Well, we'll see a replay of that moment in a couple of seconds. Yeah, Molly just. I mean, it's amazing to have her back in the finals, but what could have been? Well, she will take some confidence going to the World Champs for sure after that performance when yeah, she reassesses absolutely, it. Absolutely, I think. It, it, one of those moments that just kind of stings a little bit initially and then, yeah, but still very proud. Happy to see her there. Yeah, this is nearing the point where she fell. So she had that move to the pocket. Really good. 
worked out how to change her hands to find the height yeah, she needed. Yeah, so we can see there she didn't have the... Oh. So she was literally just, like, palming on the thumb, basically. She hadn't hadn't found the hold yet, which is so incredible. Like, how, the, how on earth did she manage to hold that entire swing without even taking yeah. the hold? When you realise what she was holding onto with the left hand. Yeah, yeah, I think it just goes to show, like, exactly how strong she is and... Yeah. I'm getting confirmation that Vita Lucan is not going to be awarded that plus either. So, it's a story with that. All right. Top three now. Natsuki Tani comes out. She's just 19. Only three competitions this year. Innsbruck, Vila and Chamonix. Maybe a case of the Japanese selectors picking and choosing a little bit and certain athletes for certain competitions. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, a lot of the lead specialists tend to get picked for Briançon, especially when it's um, in proximity to a world championship event, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's why we do see like such strong performances from them. Yeah, they're just trying to feel out their team or who has the best chances at the moment. But it has been interesting. Someone like Serato, they've just thrown into almost every single World Cup. So they obviously feel like he needs experience, whereas people like Natsuki Tani, I mean, they've kept her for the lead season which just heaps the pressure on, doesn't it? Because yeah. it's now she's got to perform now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's certainly an athlete who's been close to topping the podium before, and this is a, a really solid opportunity for her to maybe take her first World Cup win. Yeah, both her and Nanoha Kume, big favorites for a podium here this evening, so let's see, but she's to work on that match a little. Stretches out towards the right. Missed out on the finals in Chamonix by one play. She was ninth there, but sixth in Vila. And the crowd now, as I look to my left, is enormous. Stretches out of sight. Oh yeah, it's next level. She uh, tends to be a little bit hesitant with jumps, but... Well, what? <laughs> He's tried to static the bottom yeah, of the volume. I'm not sure if that's going to... Uh, be able to work. I think she's just going to have to really go for this one. She can occasionally talk herself out of moves like this and not commit to it. We see a bit of this now, this hesitation. Yeah, it's this, this left foot is strange, the rope's in your way. Uh, it's kind of coordinated, having to get both at the same time. And oh! Yeah, not enough. No, she was very low on it. Doesn't want to look at the crowd. And I don't think she can quite believe that. So lots of emotion going on here in this women's lead final. She stands back up again, and this is where two champions are born. She composes herself facing the wall, but you can see how upset she is from that. Didn't look comfortable. As you said, had the rope in the way, had a funny left foot, and didn't fully commit to that move. Too low. Kick, legs kicking backwards and just bumped into the wall. Didn't care about self-preservation at that point. Yeah, yeah, quite disappointing for her. I'm sure she's, you know, more aware than anyone that this is a really strong opportunity to, to take a World Cup win or take another World Cup podium. And uh, that's not going to be the case today, unfortunately. So, yeah, super unfortunate to uh, and to lose out on a, a weakness that she's very evidently been working on. So. Yeah, that dynamic sequence can get you unstuck if you're used to more static moves. All of the women, by the way, that's what we're looking at in that shot, gathered around her. She's sitting at the back. One of the nicest thing about our sports as our next athlete comes out. Okay, well, two to go. The evening suddenly changing pace. Now, this lady here, Nanoha Kume, second in Chamonix, so she's podiumed already this year. One in Dallas in an impressive form. Yeah, another super, super strong young Japanese climber, as if we didn't have enough of them already. But for her, she doesn't know the position she's in, but with Natsuki Tani falling and Eliska Adamovska having on and off moments, this could be a huge opportunity for her here. Oh yeah, she, I think she's definitely one of the favorites coming into this final. All right, off the ground, into the black holes. Don't count your chickens yet. We know that jump can cause problems. 
Looks like uh, Vita Lukens confirmed a, a podium position. Everyone's congratulating her at the moment. She looks, she looks super happy with herself. Yeah, she's sitting right at the front. So what colour will it be with two athletes to go? Minimum bronze for Vita. There it is. You can see on the screen. She's confirmed. No, no, Hakume will be thinking about this jump. Now, psychologically as well, everyone else climbed for a long time. Suddenly Natsuki Tani comes down quickly. She'll be thinking about this jump. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they're very she'd be very aware that it's likely this move. It's an interesting one because people have been climbing for a long time but not getting quite as close to the top as, as we saw in yep. the men. So one of those instances of uh, like that opposite, people finding a lot of rests in the beginning or in the middle and like really eating through their time. Oh well, here we go. Here's the jump. Higher, get up the left hand securely on it. Ooh, but lost the feet for a sec. Oh, a slightly different beta there with a, a campusing through to the top of that volume there. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's what you intended. But now she's just making this look slightly awkward. Gets the right foot up now, and she should be set once she brings that left hand through. Very, like, three-dimensional climbing. Yeah, big volume's not really used on this wall. The fact one she's on now is the biggest on the wall currently. This pushes the climbers out into a, a different kind of position. Yeah, and there's a lot of room to uh, work yourself into something a little bit awkward or precarious as well when you've got those like big three-dimensional shapes to move through. Yeah, it can be difficult to orientate yourself. That was where Molly did that little side heel, side foot. Noha makes the jump over into what's a jug for her. Gets that quick draw, Clipton out of the way. And now next few moves shouldn't be too bad as she approaches the foot first sequence. Getting huge support, someone is screaming Gamba up at her. Gamba, the Japanese alley. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of love and support coming from the Japanese team there. They seem to be a very tight knit group, um, and they really, yeah, seem to have a lot of a lot of love for each other, which is which is really cool to see. Yeah, and amongst the coaches as well, I noticed that the coaches tend to be everywhere at every competition, and they yeah. form this bond. Yeah, absolutely. It's like yeah, so important to have that support network at every event. Makes such a difference when you're on the road for such a long time, so far away from home, and also for such young athletes as well to be, you know, probably away from their parents, away from their friends in school. Yeah, a lot to deal with for them. She is only 19, remember? All right, she's got the feet in. We'll find a moment to shake it. Rotates through, grabs the right hand. Oh, one arm campus is that. Second time she's done it, so feeling quite good on the cutlass yeah, moves. Yeah, 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 could be feeling quite fresh. I think she got a little tangled in the rope there as well. Well, she rests. She's coming up to two minutes on the clock. No one's topped out the women's route yet. Only one top of the evening on the men's route. And look how bad those jibs are on the slope. Oh, the yeah, pinches. tiny, so tiny and blocked. This is like every hold is blocked now. Yeah, it's it standard. Yeah, if it wasn't bad enough already, <laughs> you put gonna... a little jib on top of it so you like just can't grab the top. <laughs> and she did what Molly did, which was try to go a bit too early without the hand on top of the white volume. Yeah, yeah, that's a very sneaky little uh, piece of beta. I think that you have to. Some of the girls just went. Uh, some of the women went for it just like really instinctually, and then others haven't spotted it just yet. Hopefully. Um, she's able to find that position. Yeah, well, for the second time, she hasn't found it. And now she might There we know. go, makes it happen. Suddenly realizes you can hold on to that bit, and this will give her the extra couple of inches she needs. So it changes the body position as yeah, well. Yeah, and you're able to sort of like push your elbow into the black hole as well, which makes a huge difference. But yeah, one minute left on the clock, so she's got a lot of climbing left to go, about a third of the wall, I would say. So. Hasn't really got much time to, to hang around. Yeah, it's a very good point. I hadn't 
I've forgotten about the clock, and yeah, 50 seconds now. So that was the hold Molly didn't get with the left fingers. She was just pinching the volume. So yeah, taking taking over Molly's potential podium spot now. Yeah, she moves into third position. 35 seconds left. And you can see that she's uh, she's aware that there's not much time left. Yeah, suddenly motored up a gear here into the pinches. She'll still have to be precise, 24 seconds. It's a long way to go towards Vita's high point. She's still got a clip, of course. Whipping that clip in as fast as she can. 17 seconds left on the clock. I wonder if she wishes she might have gone early. She's this fresh, climbing quickly. I 10 seconds? No, and it's... Well, it's third place, and that means Vita Lucan is guaranteed a silver medal. And Manon Healy has got a, a medal as well. Absolutely, yeah, medal for France in front of the home crowd. The, the French are, yeah, looking pretty. You can see some <laughs> French spectators going absolutely wild out there, actually. Yeah, there's a lady at the front who just stood up and was pumping her arms in celebration. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, one of the climbers on the French team. Yeah, so great from them. Really good to see the audience getting behind all of the athletes. And we are on to our final athlete in a minute. Nano Hakume says goodbye as we watch her last moments. That was the launch down low after the jump. That was the one armor she pulled off. Little bump of the hands. Falling off the smallest, must be the smallest hold on the route as she came down up there. But that is a good performance from her. She's in a potential medal position. One athlete to go. It's our previous winner, Eliska Adabowska, qualifying in first. And look, we we're talking about the mental side of this sport, and it is something we've seen her struggle with this year. You can see the battles. When she comes off stage, she's disappointed sometimes and takes it quite personally. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think she had a... She's honestly had quite a unique sort of rise into the sport she came in she was already you know like off the bat she was obviously a talented climber and then very quickly she took this sort of like unexpected win in Priançon and then um, yeah I, I can imagine it's quite hard to sort of like maintain your composure um, coming off of that when it sort of comes out of nowhere um, but yeah this competition has just looked like a completely different athlete uh, yeah like so composed so strong um, yeah, it looks like maybe her, all the training she's been doing is just sort of starting to peak now. I don't know if something's changed, but yeah, it was definitely working for her in the previous rounds. Yeah, absolutely. The moment she came down for that first qualifying flying run, it's like she took a breath, like a weight had been lifted off her shoulders. All right, well, she's through the first couple of sequences, okay. But we're hyping her up a lot here. There's, there's lots of climbing to go. And this is the first time in a long time she's been in this position, so the pressure is heaped on her shoulders. Yeah, no real trouble with that jump, which is good to see. Yeah, part of a fairly big Czech team that's been moving around. Adam Ondra, her teammate, of course, has only done a couple of World Cups this year. Easily into the side pull, gets a big drop knee in with the heel, pressing against that blue volume. Making that clip look comfortable, and then this is a good position for her to shake out. Yeah, looking composed. Face covered in chalk. <laughs> oh, wow. Really wow. nice knee bar. How do I didn't even see that before? Yeah, first athlete to spot that one, and it's almost no hands. I, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it very well could be. It's like the hands is just the little insurance policy. Well, gets a little, gets a little back, and then keeps moving. Thing is, is we know that time can be a problem on this route, yeah, so she absolutely. won't want to stay there. Yeah, she's uh, she's got a, about a minute to get up to this foot first sequence if she wants to sort of keep up with the pace of some of the other climbers. Yeah, we saw Nano Hakume really speed up at the top. So keep an eye on that clock. Vita is just sitting at the front of the stage, arms crossed over her knees, watching in silence at the moment. 
very, very nervous, nervous uh, wait for her to see. She already knows she's got her best ever World Cup result. Um, and then, yeah, maybe her first ever World Cup win. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, with three minutes, 14 seconds maximum away from finding out. But right now, it's all about this lady. Looks for the big kick up high, gets it in the first time. There's a potential knee bar in here as well. She goes for a very high right heel. At least she's, you know, aware of the that sort of positive edge on top of the white volume early, so hopefully won't have too much trouble moving through the mantle through the next section. She knows it's there, she hopefully knows she can grab it. A little and knee scum on the on the dual tech section of the volume. I was concerned about her popping that right heel, it was so high above her head, but yeah. she made it work. All right, well, let's see if she's got something left. She's got 2 minutes 26 to get to 46 on the wall. So far, yeah, there we go. She's coming to the top of the volume. Elbows pushing down into the black EP. Yeah, one of the more experienced athletes knowing that move. But look how much climbing there is to go. Two minutes is a lot of time, though. Yeah, yeah, two minutes should be enough time to hopefully have a an efficient, yeah, bumping through the, the orange hole. Looking good at the moment, no drama from her at all. Big powerful cross through, commits into the orange. Yeah, it still looks like she's got plenty of uh, gas left in the tank, honestly. I'm trying to look for any mistakes she's making and it's it's pretty perfect so far. Yeah, pretty good so far. Now maybe getting a bit more pumped as she comes up. Yeah, a bit of pump coming through, sitting over the heel. She's on 41. But again, like, yeah, kind of straight back into being comfortable and composed. All right, nails across through. This is where we lost No Hakume. Eliska gets the fingers on it, but only just the fingertips. This could be her gone here. It is. So she falls, but with that, currently she's in third. Now hold on and wait a couple of seconds for the judges to confirm this one. But she, <laughs> she she's asking where she's at. No one's really confirmed. Now she's got the confirmation that it's a medal at least. Yeah. So that means Vita Luca takes her first. First ever World Cup gold, and she looks ecstatic. <laughs> In the background there, you can see her getting a big hug from the other athletes. Natsuki Tani, recovering from her disappointment, gives her a hug there in the background. And Eliska, well, she's back on the podium. She deserves to be there. She really does. Yeah, she looks <laughs> psyched. She's so happy. And, and yeah, so happy for her, the competitors as well. I think like this is a group of women who, who um, yeah, clearly have like, so much respect for each other. Oh. Vita, Vita's in tears. Yeah, hey, everyone's almost in tears in that row. Can we in the background? Sebastian, one of our organizers there, getting everyone ready. Let's see her run again. She launched up, never a moment of hesitation until that fall came. Good work with the feet. Up towards that tiny hold and just had almost, I think it's just two fingers on that thing. Micro crimp needed a big bump. Came down to the ground, and that was Eliska's run. And this was the moment she won, or she got a medal. Well, we wait. Manon Healy, <laughs> enjoy this. A bronze for we her. Have a standing ovation from the French crowd going absolutely wild. <laughs> there they are. Look at that dust chalk flying through the air. They celebrate with Manon Healy. And then we just watched Eliska Alamska takes the silver. So that score did get changed then from that score. So she's into silver. And then finally, Vita Luca runs out and I am pretty happy for her. That's so, it's so exciting. Long time coming, I think. Yeah, brilliant from her. Gets that gold medal.
So, Campbell, you've got to go and talk to her. Um, I say goodbye to you. That's it. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I had such a good time. It's like such a cool perspective on the final. And yeah, I really enjoyed being here. Well, thank you for coming. Good luck for the world champs. And please say hello to the rest of the Australian team from me. Will do. Thank you so much, Matt. Talk to you later. So, confirmation, Vita Lukin takes the gold medal. Congratulations to her, Eliska Adamowska and Manon Healy after that. Nano Hakume, 43 plus. Molly Tulsa Smith, 35. Camille Bougier, 34 plus. Same score, Martina Demel with a 34 plus. And Natsuki Tani, disappointment from her, 12 plus, leaves her in eighth place, but she will return to climb again. Well, we're just waiting for the podium to be set up. The organizers doing a speedy job there to get everything sorted for us. You can see the banner is up, podium is built, and Campbell has gone round to find Vita Lucan backstage to have a chat with her. And we can take a moment to pause here this evening. What a final that was. Serato and Raku taking the win for the men, Vita Lucan taking the win for the women. So maybe, maybe I could have predicted it, but in terms of the women's, it was just so wide open. Didn't know who could take it. I think that's one of the fastest podium builds I've ever seen as well. Out on stage and ready. Good work from the team here in Briançon with their new wall. That crack in the middle, by the way, reflects a crack in a mountain in front of it. So it reflects that feature in the landscape, which I think is a lovely touch. And the athletes are gathering over on the uh, left-hand side of the stage. Getting ready for that podium. So the schedule for the next couple of weeks, well, there's a couple of weeks off, would you believe it, before Bern at the beginning of August. And in fact, we're going to go down now to find Campbell and Vita Lucan behind the stage. Vita, congratulations after so many finals, a World Cup medal. Uh, you've finally taken your first ever World Cup victory. Uh, how are you feeling? Amazing. I'm speechless. I, I did not expect it. I think I just, I know, I know what happened. I just climbed and enjoyed the route and yeah, I, I give it all, I fought hard and yeah, I'm really surprised, I, I'm just happy. Yeah, it was, it was an absolutely stunning fight, uh, such amazing climbing. Um, you've had a, a bit of a rough start coming into the season, your pre-season, a little bit of an injury, uh, like tell us a little bit about how your preparation was for this event and, and sort of what this means to you now going forward. It was a really tough season, I injured my knee in, the, in January and then again in February and I didn't climb for like February till the middle of April. I just hang on the beast maker. I suffered uh, ACL tear and the meniscus uh, tear. So I went through the surgery. They removed the half of, me of, half of the meniscus. Um, so yeah, it was like a really tough season and it means the victory, it means a lot to me. It was completely unexpected. I know it, it's just amazing. Yeah, it's such an incredible recovery and so much to come back from. Um, I guess now that you've got this win under the belt, what's uh, what's next for you? What's going on for the rest of the year? Yeah, well, now I have like two weeks left until the World Championships. So yeah, I will try to give it all in the World Champs. So we'll see. I'm just really looking forward to the next comp. Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much. Um, congratulations again. I hope you get the opportunity to soak up the victory and, and all the best for the World Championships in two weeks. Thank you very much. Nice, thank you. Well, thank you to Vita Lucan. And yes, best of luck for the next couple of weeks. It's funny with the World Champs, it's been coming for a while. We've been talking about it for what seems like forever. And finally, it's here. And we'll find out who the world champion is and who the Olympic places will go to. So exciting times ahead before we move into the continental competitions. 
And then finally, after that, well, the Olympics in Paris 2024. This climbing returns to the biggest stage. We're watching right now the highlights from the women's side of things. Big moves throughout the route for them. See Manuel Healy cutting loose before she got her heel, her feet up. Swinging and dropping down in that physical sequence about two thirds of the way through. Waves goodbye to the crowd who are happy to see her standing on the podium. Vita Lucan flew, didn't she? Our gold medalist tonight looked collected and calm throughout her run, using all of that strength and physicality that she's known for. And as we heard in that interview, a pretty bad knee injury. Final down and said good Climbed early on. Only the third athlete out, and that was Aliska running over to congratulate her at the side of the stage. Well, I think we're almost ready. There's the, uh, I can see the dignitaries gathering. Athletes out of sight in that hole in the wall, in that isolation section. Stage nicely cleared, ready for the cameras to have an uninterrupted view of proceedings. And that is the confirmation of the men's scores. Sorato and Raku with a top, the only top of the whole evening. Taisa Hummer in second, 49 plus. And Satoni Yoshida, bronze for him. Same score, count back, deciding things. And then for the women, Vita Lucan, 46 for her, takes her the gold. Aliska Adamovska, silver with 44 plus. Manon Healy, 44 plus as well, count back, deciding that medal position. Nanoha Kume, 43 plus. Molly Thompson Smith, 35. Camille Puget, 34 plus. Martina Demel, same score, 34 plus. Again, count back. And that's Suki Tani with an early slip, sent her down, missing that jump, just too low on the hold. A mistake from her, cost her dear, but still good finals, good positioning for her. Well, the music has just started, I can hear it in the background. And that means that the athletes are almost ready to come onto the stage and be given their medals. There they are, the medals are ready. The men are gonna go first. And it's an all Japanese podium. Serato standing in the middle, he's been <laughs> on a few podiums this year as that young man. At the beginning of the season in Hachiochi, we spoke to him and I did not predict how well he'd do this year. So Tony Yoshida takes the bronze medal. Somewhere the DJ is ramping things up. A lot of the crowd have stayed. In fact, hardly anyone has gone home. <laughs> tai Sai Homer takes the silver medal. Good return from him as well. That injury, quite a few athletes injured this year and Taisai one of those, so returning from the bench, so to speak. Into that silver medal. And 
finally, Serato waits patiently for his gold. A young man with a lot of potential. We'll wait to see him in the World Championships, but right now in Briançon, he will enjoy another gold medal, this time in lead. Awesome work from him. Marcus Galaris, RFC president, presenting the medal and having a little chat with Serato on the way through. He knows as well the talent that he's watching. Well, we've heard it a few times. The athletes gathering at the top. Usually that happens after the national anthems, but why not now as well? But now it is time for the national anthem of Japan. Well, there we go, men's podium finishes. Serato with the win here tonight. I like the uh, trophy as well. <laughs> I'm looking confused. <laughs> they, they did the standing on top of the podium bit a little too early before. So now they've been asked to get back up so the photographers can have their moment. <laughs> Love those trophies, really cool. Okay, the men leave the stage. Next up is the women. Vita Luca. Lucan was pretty emotional backstage with Campbell earlier on. I think we might see that emotion, certainly the joy from Vita Lucan returning from multiple tears in her knee. Doing that rigmarole of rehab and gradually building the strength all of the mental doubts that come in and to come take a gold medal just before the world championships is going to do her psychologically a whole load of good just wait again the crowd patient stacked 20 or so deep at the front of the stage, trying to get a glimpse of their heroes.
So here we go, the women enter the stage. Issa Lucan right in the middle of things. Our first league gold. Now wait for the reaction when Manuel Healy stands up on that third place. I think this is mainly what this crowd has been waiting to see. And here we go. <laughs> Let's see what the crowd's got to say about this. Quite a lot. Manuel Healy takes the bronze medal. A strong performance from her. Using that experience she has to read certain sequences and just refine her beat at mid move sometimes. And with a silver medal, Eliska Anamovska stands up tall, waves to the crowd. And again, psychologically, would have done a lot for her as well. A competition I would imagine that she's happy that she waited for. Finally, Vita Lucan hears her name announced and the smile cannot leave her face. Eyes sparkling in the lights here. Vita Lucan will stand on the top spot for the first time. Well deserved from Vita Lucan. Yeah, the noise in the stadium right now, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, pumping out music, the crowd going crazy. And it's national anthem time. Well, there we go. We finish off tonight with the celebration that we expect. And we will now say goodbye to you before we head to Bern for the World Championships. Thank you, Campbell Harrison, for joining me in the commentary box. It's been a pleasure here this evening. The new wall in Briançon will rest for another year and we will return for more IFSC climbing action.